Why the fuck would I forget where I come from? Why the fuck would I forget my roots? It's a working class mentality. What they say is, don't forget you're only like us. You always be inspirational, don't you? Yeah. I'm yeah, you know what? You, you know, if you feel it, you, you know, you start go out and you do, you, you know, don't hate, you know, fuck the haters. You know, just be you. I ask myself the question, has this been in vain? Have I achieved what I've set out to achieve? Am I going to get out of this walk? What I want is eventually I'm gonna have that house party McGuinness has got. I'm gonna find the woman of my dreams. I'm gonna have and I'm gonna be able to make what happen what I want. Welcome to Shake the Mice. Join us in an episode where laughter meets insight as we peel back the curtain on the journey of local comedian, actor, writer, and producer, John May. We touch on a range of topics, including business, the big stage, and the highs and lows of life behind the lens. John, a massive warm welcome to Shake the Mic. Thanks for Thank you me. so much for coming in. How are we? How are we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad, lads, I'm sad. I'd like to take a moment to start out by saying, personally for me, this is a moment on Shake the Mic. Yeah. Um, for me to introduce John May is something I've envisaged for a while. Oh. And it feels like a milestone. So when I started the podcast, these were the moments I visualised. So I just want to say a massive thank you for coming in. And thanks for sharing the moment with me. Ah, oh, take that as a compliment. Thank you. It is, boss. Really? Thank yeah. you. It's right. Um, Aim high. <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll have John May. <laughs> it is, though. These are the things you're thinking of when you're starting out, isn't it? I can help. Yeah. So, um, ah. No, those means a lot, John. Thank you. What really strikes me with you is your creativity, your level of ability to create something that's amazing. Um, I love anyone who's authentic and original and can have an idea and bring it to life. Yeah. I feel like having an idea is one thing, John, but bringing it to life is, is a completely different story. Mm. For you, where does your creativity come from? Um, my creativity. <laughs> Like, creativity doesn't have to just be, like, being funny or what people's vision of creativity is, like, drawing or painting or being, ex you know, being expressive or what. It's like, I just set myself little challenges. Give me an example. Um, barbershop. Like, I had a barbershop and I didn't stop till we were the best. And I believe we were the best. Like, we were, but we'll touch on that later. But there's an example. It's like, but once I achieved that, it was like, what do we do now? I've got to have that fire in my belly every morning. I've got to have something burning. And that's how I live my life. That's my character, you know? But that's creativity. So whether it's a barbershop, whether it's writing or whether it's acting or whether it's... You know, even walking the country, you're still creating. You still add an idea, and it, it's the difference between an idea and executing it. Do you know when you get an idea and it comes into your head, John? Does it excite you? Yeah. <sighs> Boss, isn't it? That's what it is. Yeah. That and feeling, that moment where it's like, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and you, you've got to, you've got to bring it to life somehow. Yeah, and the space between can be a dark place. Do you know what I mean? The space between not having something to hyper focus on. You feel like you haven't got a purpose, so you're creating purposes for yourself. You're not existing. Do you, do you feel like you just? Do you feel like you just um, existing? You're not living, John. No, if you, I'm... If, you, if you haven't, if you haven't got a target or a goal, um, a task in mind, do you feel like? Well, basically, you're just existing. I don't think I've ever just existed, me. Like I'll see people. Well, them spaces in between, it may be a fear of just existing. Yeah. When and that's when I hit me little me little lows, do you know what I mean? But do no you, do you, does John May hit lows? Do oh, you have absolutely, lows, John? Yeah, yeah. Big time, yeah. No, because when you see it on the surface, you just see you laughing at, at every time I see you see you know, we, we don't know you for who you are. Um so like people a lot of people people just see it as, you know, he, he's funny, funny mm. man, it's John May, you know what I mean? And you're always laughing, you're always joking. You wouldn't really imagine to see that dark side of you. It's funny when, when people meet me, like, or whether, you know, in the past I've spoke to a girl or people meet me. I'm never how they expect me to be. Mm. They expect me to be a tit. 
Yeah, do you know what I mean? They expect me to be like this Ming who's just trying to make you laugh all the time. I do think I'm my characters and I'm absolutely not. I'm literally taking a piss out of people. That's yeah. not who I am. It just blows me away that when I actually see you in person now sitting in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> I, but, but I like that though. You know, when you're not afraid to be who you are. Um, you're a massive character and you can feel it. You can feel it in your presence. But I feel in this day and age, <coughs> characters something we're losing massively in society. Um, I feel like a lot of people are scared to show personality. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I think what people do, for whatever reasons, whether it's like wanting to fit in or living up to other people's expectations of them, I think sometimes people create a safe character and that's a people-pleasing trait. It's not exactly who they are, though, is it? No, is it? No, when you see that with so many people. Like, yeah, but I think I've realised that. I realised that quite young. Because when I opened the barbers, I was doing all right, but I was doing it out of the love of it. And I was being creative. But then I started to do well. And then people were like, oh, you well, do 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 all that. And I'd be, what next, John, what next? So I started living up to people's expectations of me and that caused me pain. And then it become like a false version of myself and it's like, fuck that. Did you hate that, John, mate? Don't hate him. He sounds, but <laughs> nobody, it's like, how many John Mays ago was he? He was probably about 60 John Mays ago. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He just got to keep changing and evolving. But when you look back at that person who you were, do you feel like you were, you weren't being, um, you weren't being true to yourself, John, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I had to learn that. I, I had to explore that. Otherwise, you would just, I would have just stayed in the same place. And I'd be in the same place. I'd probably be in a relationship I didn't want to be in, doing a job I didn't want to do. But I'm being a good boy. Yeah, yeah. Just That's all it probably, it was pleasing other people. So reckon people are scared and that's why they conform? Absolutely, yeah. They just conform to be safe. How'd you break out of that? Well, I've just done it, haven't I? Well, I've just done it again. You know, I just, you know, I, I just walked the whole country um, one and a half times. But the, before that, I'd be barber shop. I was, do, do, you know, I was earning decent money. I had a nice car, nice home, I had it all, but I was miserable because I'd have achieved my goal. So I created a prison for myself. So I got rid of the law, got rid of everything and just started again and done a massive reset. But... And a lot of men, especially men, have approached me and said, I take my hat off to you. I was like, why? He said, because you've done something I'd love to do, but I haven't got the balls to do it. Because they feel safe. But for me, no disrespect to anyone else. I'll live my life how I choose, and you can live yours how you choose. But for me, that just existing, you become stagnant. 100%. Yeah. We're and not I, here I, for that. We're not here for that, yeah. are we, John? So it's like, I think a, a lot of people don't realise I was a barber for 20 years. Loads of people don't know I was a barber. And I always had this thing, like, God rest his soul, I used to work for a fella. Well, it was called Jack's Barbers, and I worked for Ralph on Breck Road. That's who was on my apprenticeship. And I remember his dad died, and he had, scissors, like, scissors made of flowers and, like, stuff like that. And I thought, that's pretty cool. But then... <laughs> He was Jack the Barber. Yeah, everybody knew him as Jack the Jack Barber. Jack the Barber, and that sounds, but that was his whole life. But I just wanted that to be a chapter of mine. We only get one, so I want to, I want to experience John, as much as I can. Because there was a blind shop over the road from your barbers, and maybe like, must be 13 years ago now, I worked in that blind shop Did over you, yeah? the road from Sweeps when mm. you had the blind, when you had the barbers. So I can sort of remember that time and I can relate to it. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean? And it's strange because you're talking about like evolving and I've evolved and now we're here now today sitting down in this chair and it's crazy as you're telling me the story because I'm just reflecting back yeah. now in my mind to back to them times. Are you comfortable? You seem very comfortable in your own skin, are you? I, th I think so, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm a... Here's the problem with me, right? I'm not very articulate, but I'm intelligent. And when you're intelligent, you can't live in ignorance, so you explore who you are. 
But by unraveling who you are and any traumas or anything that you've grew up with and you've lived with, that's a bit of a kiss. Does that make sense? You'd overthink things when you're intelligent. But, or you, you can't you'd explore you'd, things more. You'd, you'd explore think about things, things more, more, but then you're unpicking at stuff. So once you start to unpick it, you need to clean the fucking lot of it up. And that is a long journey. But I think I, I think that is the point. I don't think we ever reach perfection as well, John. My dad's no. always said to me, Jack, if you're looking for perfection, you're going to end up very disappointed. Oh, of course, yeah. But sometimes I feel like part of our nature is to try and find our, our, perf- our idea of perfect. There's levels. There's levels of awareness. Talk to me, brother. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about like, like bloody magic or not like that, but there's levels, isn't it? No, it's, yeah, I totally understand. It's like... You've got groups of people who you've got groups of people who still got the same mates as when you were kids, which is fine, but they haven't moved on. Do you know what I mean? They haven't. They've all stayed the same. No one's. Ex- do you get what I'm saying? Do you feel like you have periods? I this is something I have found in my life. If you, when you really <coughs> haven't haven't grown, you have moments of sort of loneliness because you grow away from. From the, the 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 people who you were with, and yeah. As you're evolving, there's a gap. There's a there's space a backlash. In time. There's a backlash from it. I'll give you a prime example, and a lot of people might disagree with me, but it pisses me off. And people who know me know this pisses me off, right? This is I, what it's about, John. Get I will get there, someone who doesn't even know me on my social media, and he'll go, "Love you, John. Love what you do. Blah blah blah. Big fan. Da 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 da." And then he'll go. But don't forget your roots. And then he said, lay me out on this. Don't forget where you come from. Why the fuck would I forget where I come from? Why the fuck would I forget my roots? Why the fuck would I reject where I've come from? But what I believe people say by that, it's a working class mentality. What they say is, don't forget you're only like us. And where, that is what happens, mate. Because... You, when I opened the barbers, everyone was like, go and see John, go and see John, go and see John. And I did it. Then I bought myself an Astra. I've lived this, so I know what I'm talking about. It's like, I got myself an Astra and people were like, oh, I'm doing, 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 doing all right, are you? I only bought a fucking Astra. <laughs> but I was doing all right. John? I can't <laughs> remember, <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> but I was showing evidence <laughs> of bettering myself and doing well. Success. And what that does then, that makes other people feel uncomfortable. About you. So what they do then, they reject you and smear you. Like, look, at Silla Black. I don't give a fuck if Silla Black moved to London. I don't give a fuck if Jimmy Tarbuck moved to London. But everyone hates them because they left. Because they evolved and moved on. Everyone hates Ringo Starr. See, the thing is, John, what I can't work out with the mentality of people like that. If my next door neighbour is driving a fucking Ferrari, it does not help or hinder me in any which way, shape or form. So I shouldn't really be asked about what he's doing. I only, I'm only i only asked about what I'm doing. But a lot of people seem to be looking at what you're doing. You, but they're you, the people who you find a lot of the time are unhappy people. Well, you, you no, people like you until you're doing better than them. Because they feel safe, and once you start to do well and break through this thing, they, they start to resent you. And I'm not talking about me acting or like yeah. the little profile that I've got. This happens when I had the barbers. I can't understand the mentality, though, John. If me and you were friends and 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 you were flying and I was doing so so, but then I absolutely took off. There's no reason for you to hate on that, is there? I know for a fact I held back on my success in the barbers. I didn't go any further because I didn't want certain people. To feel uncomfortable because they were the successful ones. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And that's the truth. I know that, but I recognise that now. At the time, didn't you? No, no. So I held back because I was didn't you want... not comfortable with being successful, John. In and around no. them people, comfortable no, no. in yourself, but you didn't want to pull up in a nice car, or you didn't want to, you know. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Did you feel like you were putting it in their face a little bit, or you didn't? Yeah, but that's their problem, not yeah, yours. Not yours. So what are you meant to do? You success? Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, that was their problem, not mine. But I, I tried to people please certain people, and I held back. Do you know what I mean? I held back my success because I wasn't the successful one. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. You okay. grow, you became the successful one. You weren't that originally. No, I'm talking when it was at its height. Mm. It was, you know, I was doing well, but 
Yeah, I didn't yeah, want to be. I didn't want to be seen as like that all the time. Didn't want to be seen as into this person. forgetting me roots. Didn't want to be seen as being above me station. Didn't want to be seen as forgetting where I'm coming from. Do you what? get one? So if I'd expanded, boom, 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 I know I'd have got like this resentment. And how do you feel about that now? I will just do what I fucking want to do. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just hopefully inspire people along the way. But I'm not no. letting insecure, small-minded people prevent me. From the outside looking in, you seem very comfortable in your own skin. I mean, you fucking must be when you're singing Tina Turner tracks to Liverpool players. If that's not so confident, <laughs> so don't know what fucking is, John. Keep your eye on the money. <laughs> Keep your back on the wall. And your private dancing. And sing it, come on, lads. Dancing for money. Do what you want. When I heard you sing private dances to them in that car on them video all them years ago. That shoulder movement. Yeah, and I thought, you know what, I've got to hear it live in person. You want to give me a little... All these music? men coming in here's players sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they are. That's all you get. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> I said that to them. I've got the calves for it and everything. <gasps> oh, amazing. Brilliant. You've recently done a carpool karaoke as well with Darwin Nunes, Gapo and Curtis Jones dressed up as Father Christmas, yeah. giving Christmas presents out. Holidays are coming, holidays are coming, holidays are coming with Coca-Cola, with Coca-Cola. Look down, <laughs> look about. <laughs> you people. never will go long. <laughs> <laughs> the joy on people's faces and the laughs you had in that car, John, just fucking unbelievable to see. Are they pinch yourself moments? It, it, it's like... Yeah... <sighs> I wouldn't say pinch yourself. Well, I see Mike McCartney today. I nearly crashed into Paul McCartney's brother today. Wow. Yeah, where our offices is, he's friends with the fella who's, he owns the building. And I was like, that's fucking Mike McCartney. <laughs> and that, I was I was a bit starstruck, starstruck there. Yeah, it was like, what the fuck? But um, I just feel very blessed that I'm able to... How does that come about, John? Did they phone you and say, yeah, I'll come down and pick the lads up and take them for a spin in the car? How did that happen? That's exactly what happened. Yeah. That, it all started Do with... you know when you get that phone call, come in, John, you put the fucking phone down? What, what's going on through your mind at that moment? What are you thinking? Oh, yeah, I'll just go and pick the lads up. Uh, what, when's that day? You know what I mean? I'll be waking up in the morning thinking, this, this fucking night. I don't get too excited about it. Anything like that. I have been an actor for like 15 years now, you know, and I found myself... In loads of little situations, whether it's sitting in the Rovers or I don't know, like just where people I've grew up with on the telly and I'm sitting in their company or I'm having foods with all, around all the Liverpool players or it's just, I'm just grateful that I'm living a life where I'm able to be part of the culture of the time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you look at Billy Butler, you see him, he was like certain things with the cavern and this and that and that. And he was around, he was like, he was involved of his, in his city and whatever else of the time. And I am. I love the way you can be who you are as well, John, around him. Like, I think that's why you're perfect for what you do. That's why you are who you are. But I mean, like the likes of being in that car with them, some people would be like, whoa, yeah. they freeze up and their head will fall off. And yeah. you know, that's what you're they said to me. Private to me. Dancer, or you're talking, right, lads, let's have a little sing along here and that. Uh, because <laughs> that one with Nunes and that, right? <laughs> it was chaos. It was fucking chaos. Like, because we had the camera crew, we had them, and you don't know how they're going to act, you know what I mean? No. They're there to play football, you know? It's like, and they're getting dragged into these Savvy for Coca Cola. They're like, so. We're driving them round and it's havoc. And like the producers and the, the, the crew who, who sort of developed it, well, I'd done it with them. But uh, they, I, they sent me a message, said, John, there's no one on this earth who would have been able to have control that the way you did. So I'm not overwhelmed by them. No, you're not. Do you, you know can, what I mean? You can see that, John, you yeah. know what I mean? You're <laughs> talking, singing, lads and all that. Yeah. Yeah, Feliz Navidad. I had, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know I had Mignolet I mean? singing to me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy bit, fucking hell, and the R lads, just hang on a minute, I'll pull over here, and then you're going in, fucking getting dog biscuits and yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it's me dog's birthday today, and that. Uh, and he ended up fucking fuming as well, didn't he? Yeah, but the, yeah, the objective that? was to get, to, get, to get, run out the yeah, car. And it was fucking amazing, but how we, you hold yourself for that long, and that. I don't know, it's a case of having to, isn't it? Just, yeah. You know what I mean? Boss. But uh, we, I wrote a sketch with them a few years ago with um, Henderson and Robbo and a few others. It was like an office-style sketch, um... 
they done really well on that, but I was like the main writer on that. And then they just asked me to do another one. We only filmed it the other day. So, so I was with Mo Salah. I've got Nunes saying, oh, are we? Recognise oh. me. I'm like, no way. Blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, you were all there. So we're, we're, in, the, we're in the room. Like, yeah, we've just done another big sketch with them. So they keep asking me back, which is great. It's just amazing what you do. Let's peel back the layers and let's oh, get beneath the skin go. a little bit. Because we've all seen you through the lens or behind the screen. But I want to get to know you. Okay. Who is John May? Who is John May? Um, this version of John May, he's like... At the core, John. Oh, go on, go on. What, what, what level? What, uh, what, are you, what, what are you looking for? Who are you? Essentially, to you. I believe... If you had to ask yourself, who am I? I genuinely believe I'm a... I'm a good guy. Morally do the right. Got a good moral compass. I'm... The only person I probably cause harm to is myself, and if I cause harm to anyone else, it's indirect. Um, I genuinely, <laughs> I, I genuinely believe I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good guy. Like, um, complicated soul. In what way? Elaborate for me. Compl- I think I did before. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just my, my my goal is to just explore who I am and just be open and honest to myself. Otherwise, I can't live that life. I can't live that miserable life with a with the big fucking I don't know, just throwing money into a pit of just unhappiness, like whether it's thrown into a house, you're not even happy and you know what I mean? And, and like having affairs behind your wife's back. I just wanna I just wanna be honest and true and real. I just want a happy a happy life. And that's not by getting things. Well, that's another thing, and it's John, do you know when we start um becoming more successful, should we say, or whatever. Sometimes we start trying to fill the void with material things. Yeah. So you've got a void, which a lot of us have. You think, oh, I'll go out and get a watch, or and that'll make it feel Could better, be or a pair of shoes, yeah. or I'll, I'll fucking get a car, or we'll go here, or it, but it doesn't really fill that void. It, it's inside, isn't it? It might for 10 minutes. It might be, you know, for, it might make you feel good for a few days, but... It, it only goes so well, far, that's, that's, I suppose that's what, what I'm doing. You know, I'll, I'll give up everything, walk the country. Have, do you feel like you've executed what you're trying to do or you are executing what you're trying to do in terms of the change for you? I, I, yeah, I believe there's a hole, but I'm not trying to fill the, this bottomless pit with whether it's women... Drugs, fucking cars, Sex, houses. Drugs and rock and roll, baby. Yeah, it's never going to fill it, so I think I'm exploring what will fulfill it. Or maybe it'll never be filled. Just fill it with whatever makes you, what you enjoy, you know? That's not detrimental to you. Yeah. Deep. I like deep. That's why I was here. Good. Where are you from? I'm from County Road, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Scouts. Yeah. Um, you were born on the 24th of August, fucking am I right? Fucking hell. It's like, this is your life. Uh, Where'd you, you get that from? from? You know, What's your middle name? Places. What's your middle name? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shit's out. All people in high places and all the window cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, how old are you, John? When were you born? 24th of August, 19... 80, 81. 81. I'm 42. What was it like growing up in the 80s and the 90s, counted old that way? You don't really remember the 80s, do you? I was only a baby. Yeah, you're a baby. Say the 90s then. Yeah, it was cool. Bit of P. Diddy. <laughs> Spice Girls. I had a full head of hair. I was Jack the Lad. Yeah. It was it was boss. It was cool. I had what, a twin sister. What was your family life like? Mum, dad, brothers, sisters? Um, I'm the youngest of five. Mm-hmm. I've got a twin sister. Um, my mum and dad. My dad was a bricky. They both died now. My mum was a landlady of a pub. She had a pub. Oh yeah, um, am I right in saying you grew up in the pub, John? Did we... Yeah, we 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 were there. Yeah, literally grew up in the pub. Yeah, really, to be honest. Yeah, so we were there all the time. We never lived in. We lived in it for a bit, but we lived in the next street. But that was our hub. I seen you say something which I read, and it said, "You get to see different faces with the same eyes." Mm. What did you mean by that? That's actually a quote from Star Wars, but it's true. So. I don't know, maybe I just, I just, um, I clearly observe what, you know. So in the barbers, here's what happens, here's one of the reasons why I stopped barbering. 
is because when you first start barbering, you've got time for everyone, you're chatting away and you, you, you learn, you want to listen, da, 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 da. And then over time, I think you start to put people in little boxes. He's one of them. You start to realise the characters or the built up of archetypes of who people are. So there'll be certain what there'll be certain people that are coming to barbers. Eventually, you're talking 15, 20 years later. I'd see them come in, I'd go, fuck that. And I'd go to the toilet. <laughs> I'd, I'd just hide. <laughs> because I know they're just chatting shit. They're trying to impress me. And all I'm in or they're trying to impress themselves. And I'm just waiting for them to finish talking. And I'm not rude. I'm a nice guy. So I will let my energy go away then by holding it in. But then someone else would walk in and I would go, I'm cutting his ear. It's happening, P. Yeah, jump in. Do you know, that, and that's the way it was. So I, I just like being around people who can reciprocate the energy with, really. Yeah. On the on the same wavelength. Um, yeah, or something. They don't have to be on the same wavelength, but if they're interesting, you know, let's have it. But I think I just got drained by bullshitters or just surface level people who I couldn't have decent conversation with. Hmm. They had no intellect, just a shame, shame, shame. I'm not saying, yeah, well, yeah, but I'm not like going, to, I'm not talking to him, he's got no intellect. But it's like, I think in the barbers, you're sort of stuck, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You yes. can't choose. You certainly are. <laughs> yes, yes. Very no, sure. but you can't choose who you've got to spend the next half an hour with. No, that's it. It's working with the public, isn't it? You know, and you see, you see all kinds, we'll go, and I'm going to touch on that with you. What was you like as a child? Pretty much like I am now. What were your interests? I liked climbing back walls and lighting fires. <laughs> I was never into footy. Yeah, you weren't asked about that. Never played footy. Was ever. you a street urchin? Was, was you out and about? I probably was, yeah. <laughs> I probably I was never in. I wasn't yeah. I was never in. Five more minutes. Was it one of them? No, my mum and dad were in the pub, I come in whenever I wanted. But um <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I suppose it was street urchin, yeah. Always and we just played out all the fucking time. Yeah. And it's my daughter sat there just fucking yeah, got an iPod on, a telly on, and a phone all at the same time. It's mad, isn't it? It's a different world, John. Different world we're living in. Was your confidence as a boy? Have you always been confident or are you confident? Is that something you've developed? You've got to be confident. I'm massively to a confident. Degree. Is it something you've had to work on, John, and something you've had to develop? Or is it something that's always been natural for you? I've always had confidence, but self esteem is a different thing. Trying to d- depict the two for me and so explain that to you. The difference me. between self the self esteem is built up of self efficacy and self respect, where confidence is like self efficacy is your is your belief in your ability. So if I go right, I'm gonna run a marathon. Yeah, I can justify that in my mind. I'll go do that. And the self respect's different. I think I've struggled with that. That's where like. I don't know. Sometimes I've always attra- I've always attracted narcissistic people in my life, whether it's women or men. So I've always like people pleased with them early on in my life. Do you know what I mean? And maybe I've sort of let the stronger character take over and stuff. So that's something I've conquered. But yeah, com- yeah, confidence. I've always been. I've always fancied a girl. I've always ended up with her that way. It's the truth. Do you know what I mean? It's like. I've always got what I've wanted. You're a player, John. <laughs> no, but I'll be, I'll be, I'll be hard to think of if there's ever been someone I've fancied who I've never not had an interaction with. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, confidence. Yeah, I, I've got plenty. Of that I've got. I, I was a barber. You know, what initially attracted you to acting? Is there any particular standalone moment or memory where you could say that was when I first found an interest in acting? I, I always I was always good at accents. I, I just my head when people say that actually I can act, I can do accents. That's not acting. That's just that's something else. It, it is acting, but it's just anyway. Um this I always thought I could do it. Thought, yeah, something I might do later on in life. And this customer convinced me to go to acting classes. And I was like, I just opened my barber, so I weren't asked. He was like, come with us, like, no, come with us, no. And he went, oh, I've signed you up. I was like, fuck's sake. So I went. And I got in this school and then the first class, I got put with this girl and uh, we'd done this scene, but I always, it sounds a bit mad, but I remember just getting lost in this moment. It's like this whirlwind was around me, it was weird. Like, it was like, welcome to the acting world, John. 
And after that, I was like, boom, I love this. In that moment, were you not John May? I was John May. That's the difference. Yeah. Ah, do you want to explain? Explain, please. So I run acting classes. We're on high ace at the moment. And I was addicted to my acting classes. Loved it. It was the highlight of my life at the time. And you think, why? And I think a lot of people think they go to acting classes to be someone else for a while, to have a little break from being them. That's not the truth. It's the other way around. They're living this bullshit life and going to the acting class is when you can actually truly be them because that's when you can be vulnerable. That's when you can let the guard down and that's when you can truly show their ass. So it's a relief for them. So that's one opportunity that they're being them true, their true selves. So acting has taught me how to be transparent. Kind of stems from what we were saying earlier on in the podcast when I said to you, like a lot of people, society is losing character because people are scared to be themselves. <laughs> Do you feel like it's your in that well, period of time, people really are themselves? When they're actually in that classroom or when they're acting yeah, yeah, yeah. and the free, they're being that's free. when you see that's when you see the real John May. Yeah. But what like the second the, whenever I start an acting class, the first one will be, hey, everyone did it, it is what we're gonna do. Like the second or third one, I'll, I'll sit everyone down and I'll go today. I want you to talk about the most traumatic time of your life. And then I'll tell a story and I will bear my soul and I will be honest and you'll all like fucking hell. And I'll go, your turn. And then he'll sit down and think, well, John's done it, I'll do it. So then they do it. And then the next one does it. Then the next one does it. And then the next class, everyone's seeing everyone's vulnerability. Everyone's seeing the true them. So there's no bullshit anymore. There's no pretending because everyone's seeing everyone's ass. Mm. So therefore that creates a trust. Do you get what I mean? Do you feel like you need that in Acton, John? Like, yeah. To be able to, because you've got to be able to open up, not just in front of the camera, in front of the people who are in that room. And if you're sort of holding back on something and that, you're not going to get all of that person. You're not going to get that character because no. they're not going to be able to to fully execute what they're trying to do. Because they're holding back. It's that. so hard for some people to do. It's so hard for people to just, because they're that deep into it, they don't know who they are anymore. They're, and they don't know. Do you think we get lost along the way? I think loads of people don't even know who they are. And I, I think that's what I'm trying to do, is find, find out who you are. The true me, yeah. Because that's the only place you can be happy, isn't it? Well, I said, ask you that question to his John May again in a few years' time, maybe. Oh, just be, he'll be another... I don't know. Just, he'll be like another <laughs> fucking 10 John Mays down the line, won't he? he just change. Man, yeah, but... Yeah. Nick, who's checking the cameras now, always says to me, that's tomorrow, Nick's problem. That's true. From, from an outsider's point of view, and this is just an observation, I feel like an actor is what you've became and a comedian is who you are. <laughs> have, um, have you always been funny? Have you always made people laugh, John? That's that's changing again, I'll tell you about that. Um, yeah, being funny is a defence mechanism. Being funny is a survival strategy. You know, you learn to be funny. You learn what gets a response. And that's where comedy comes from. Did you um, resonate and vibe with the people when, when you'd make them laugh, John? Did you feed off? Did you fucking, yeah, funny? I was the youngest of five kids. And my mum had three boys. Found out she was pregnant. Found out a week before she was having that baby, that she was having twins. The girl come out first, which she must have wanted. And then me, the spare boy. So I always had to be, I had to find my way. And I think I naturally use comedy to do that. Mm. Yeah, I didn't get a buzz. Did I set out to make people laugh? It's just what I've done. Did you fit in? I, yeah, I always, I always, well, did I fit in? I was, there was always plenty of groups and mixed to it. Like I was always in there. Like the top group in school, like the ink. I was always in that. One of the lads. Yeah, always have been. But it's like, but that was because people thought John's funny. Yeah, have him with us. Do you know what I mean? I, I've always been all right in that way. I've never been bullied or I've never, I've always been all right. What was school life like, John? Your social circles? Yeah, I, I was thinking about this last week. It's like, I just walk through any group and I get on with anyone. But I've always felt. 
bit isolated on my own. A bit. No one was the same. I'm um, um, Yeah, no, it just. I, I, I've never had, had. I don't know. I've never had that. I've had it with a few people like that connection, that friendship. You know what I mean? But I've, I've always been self sufficient. Like I've always. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've got a best mate now. Well, I've got two. I've got Tim and Owen, like, we're really close. Obviously, me and you go way back, John. Obviously. No, you do. <laughs> no but yeah, um, yeah. I, I was always, I had lots of friends. But what would you call them associates more than yeah, you call them yeah, friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always kept myself. Would you prefer to be alone, John? Or not <sighs> necessarily, no, everybody wants company. But do you like your own company? I love my own company. Yeah. Some people don't do this. Some people aren't comfortable with b- being in their own company. Some people feel like they've got to be around someone or they've got to be around something. It is important, though, to have connection, isn't it? But connection definitely is important, but how much of it is another, is it, is, 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 is another story? Uh, you know, like I said before, with the barbers, I'll be speaking to someone and I'd have to, I get drained. So when you're drained, you need to go and recharge. So it's important for me to recharge. So mm. I do like to be on my own. But you're going back to what I was saying in school. I've always felt a bit different. I've always felt different. Do you know what I mean? You're an academic. No, but it could have been. But you just fucked around. Yeah, I fucked around. Was you the class clown? I was the class clown. <laughs> but I was also. I remember one year I got the top. I got top of the class at every exam. But I just didn't even apply myself. I just thought wow. on the day of the exam, go. I thought, God, you know what? I'll have a go with these. And that was it. So I am intelligent, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, you I've had always... your time again, John, and you could go to school again. Do you think you would have been fucking I an outstanding? Any, no, wouldn't... maybe not change. No, oh, could I, if I'd applied myself? If you'd applied yourself, could yeah. you have been an outstanding student? Do you think? Yeah, so could you, though. So could anyone. Anybody, yeah, if you'd apply yourself. But when you're in school, your mindset's different, completely different. Um, I, I was the same. I wanted to fuck about where I, if I would have put put me head into gear when I put pen to paper, I could have probably been all right. Well, I would have been all right, but I just, I, I didn't want to. And there's a difference in be, between being able to do something and wanting to do something, in it. Do you reckon you've got ADHD? I don't really know what ADHD is, John. It's just four letters to me, do you know what I mean? Talk to me, educate me. What ADHD is? Yeah. I don't think many people actually know what it is. It's um, ADHD or it's attention deficiency. So it's like you get distracted easily or you hyper-focus on certain things. So you only hyper-focus on what you're interested in. So what you're saying then, you weren't interested because it never stimulated you. So when you got ADHD, you'd have, pro- you'd have dopamine, right? So dopamine, we all have dopamine, blah, 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 that, 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 dopamine, right? So people with normal, people... <laughs> So we only dopamine because it's our survival reward, right? It's like a core thing to, mm. to live. So people will regulate normal dopamine levels. It sounds, but when you've got ADHD, the receptors in your brain don't work properly. So you're not, your dopamine doesn't get distributed evenly. So people with ADHD constantly focus on the stimulation. So whether it's on the phone, whether it's fucking cans of monster, whether it's vaping, whether it's women, whether it's drugs, whether it's fucking this, da, 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 da. they are scavengers for dopamine. Yeah. But it's just so they can feel on an even keel like everyone else. That's what ADHD does. So it's like people go, oh, you're a faddy. So fucking what? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, yo, you're a fad. Like, they try to be little, yeah, but all ADHD people are trying to do is feel normal. So when you get Ritalin, which is the drug for ADHD, that's basically speed. So you've given someone with ADHD speed, you'd expect them to go off the tits. But a kind of monster or any stimulant will just calm me down because it puts me on an even keel. You got ADHD? I haven't been diagnosed, but I've like, I had like yeah. I I've got ADHD. Do you think a lot more of us um I've got it than we know? I just think people, when you got ADHD, you don't fit into the system. Mm. So therefore, you're a problem. And when you're a problem, you get scorned. But people with ADHD are fucking magnificent. They're wonderful. They can do things your average person can't do. So in society, we fit. We should do. So like when you've got, like when people lived in, like indigenous people lived in tribes, you know, you'd have early, you know, go, are you a morning person on a, a night owl? There's a reason why you're a morning person or a night owl. I'm a morning person. Yeah, so what you'd have done in the tribe years ago, you'd have got up early, but you're protecting the tribe. Mm. So when you're sleeping, the night owl will be up then. Yeah, You've got people who have created their problem solvers. 
And so ADHD works. All the pioneers, like, you know, like, I don't know, like, even like the likes of Beethoven or look at Elon Musk. Even look at Lionel Me- look at Messi, look at Suarez, look at Richard Branson, look at... They're all got these traits, but these are the people who are breaking the moulds. But there's something wrong with them. It's fuck all wrong with them. They're magnificent. We're all magnificent in our own way, aren't we, John? It's yeah. just trying to find that, that and, and touch into them edges, feel into them edges and, 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 and really explore who we are. Yeah, but there's a bad thing with ADHD and it pisses me off as well. People go, oh, everyone's got ADHD now. Well, that devalues it. That devalues when people genuinely have. You know what I mean? Mm. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Try living with it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're a man of many hats, aren't you, John? You're not just a comedian or an actor or a funny man, but you've got good business acumen. And, you know, you built a fantastic business in Sweeps the Barbershop, which you built, developed and ran for many years. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that and how you actually found your way into cutting hair and how how, how Sweeps came to be? Yeah, okay. So when I was 16, I left school, but because I grew up in a pub and I... You know, our own brothers were in the building game. I wasn't shy for opportunities. So my first job was a trainee civil engineer. And I just, it just weren't fucking for me. I had no interest in it. So I left that. Failure. Trainee plumber. Got a job doing that. Weren't for me. Failure. Failure, 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 failure. So that's the message you're getting. You're a failure, John. But I was doing something other people wanted me to do rather than me. So I remember sitting in the barbers and I was like, sitting there for ages. There's some cow joke, Dennis's. You waiting to get your hair cut? Yeah, yeah, here? yeah. And I'm like... So you're going to piss here. It's got to do with someone in that chair. I know, I'm like, <laughs> he's making a fucking bomb here. I thought, I'm going to become a barber. And that was it. And then so I... Um, How old were you? I was 20. I was 20. And then I... So it was, start, two, so it was 2001, that way, not it? Was it? Well done. And then, um, yeah, I, I worked in a shop, Joe, Joe Cummings in Garston for two days. It wasn't for me. It was too far. I weren't fussed on the people who worked there. I wasn't made to feel welcome. Sorry, but it's true. And then the next day, I thought, I'm not fucking failing at this. And um, I thought, I'm going to walk from, because I lived on Breck Road at the time. I thought, I'm going to walk from Breck Road to County Road. I'm going to walk in every barber shop and ask them for an apprentice. And I thought... I'll get one by the time I get to count it all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. And I thought, um, so the first one I walked in was Jack's on County, on Breck Road. And I went, I like mate. Um, I want to be a barber. Any chance of an apprentice? Apprenticeship? And he went, uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and I just got it, yeah. But I, I was on like, he couldn't pay me. He didn't pay me much at all, but I love him. And I still see him now. But I was only on like seven, was, I was like seven quid a day. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Because that, but that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, it was, but I'm grateful for it. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, fucking a few years later, I was getting a hundred people in a day, charging them fifty pounds, fifteen pounds a head. So well, I don't know. Right? It, it was your return on investment, weren't it? Yeah, Do you know absolutely. what I mean? Sometimes, like people don't understand that they want to. They want it when it's at the top. They want the finished article. They want the, they want the end product. Oh, but absolutely. they don't realise. Well, fucking hell, hang on a minute to get there. You're going to have to fucking, you're going to have to, there's a process. Look, and, and I've started the production company right now and I have not got a pot to piss in, mate. I haven't got a pot to piss in right now. But I can go and get a job tomorrow and earn boss money. But you've got a vision. I've got a vision, but I'm fucking skinned. But it'll be worth it. And because that's the risk. I want to come to all this in a bit then. Okay. Okay, we were touching on it, aren't we? So anyway, <laughs> I worked in Ralph's for a year and I said, I'm going to work, I want to work for a year, Ralph. And he was like, yes, sir. But when the year come, he was like, you don't have to go, you know, you can stay. And I was like, no. He was, I'll give you more money. I went, no, I'm going. I just, I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. So then I went and worked for Ben Ayr in town. It's happening, Ben. <laughs> Me and Ben never seen eye to eye. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then I worked in him. Um, and then I stayed there for a bit. He, sorry, Ben, you're a wanker. Um, he went, he was, wasn't very nice to me because I, I was popular and he, he didn't like me. Um, I made him feel uncomfortable. And um, so I left there and I went to work on one in, in near County Rose. And then I went to the... 
I stayed there for a bit and then my brother had a shop. He said, that shop's coming up. And I felt bad leaving the other fella, but... Such is life. It, it caused me anxiety leaving this leaving this barbers because it's open one round the corner, but I, I wasn't letting any... I wasn't... It I, does, John, yeah. I've yeah. been there. Uh, I never looked back. You won't. Mm. No, did well. So that was what became Sweeps, which was... On County Road, the top end towards like the Black Horse. Yeah. And it was a big shot. Weren't, well, it weren't at first. No, it weren't. It weren't at first because now I've just cast my mind back. Yeah. It weren't. It was smaller, weren't it at first? I had one chair and I worked my fucking ass off. And then my apprentice come through. And then we had three barbers in there. And then it becomes stagnant because we couldn't grow. And then a shop come over the other, the other way. But I'd also started Sweep's Dog Room at this point. What made you touch into that? Was that just like common sense? I just thought it was barbers for dogs. But it's hard work. <laughs> like, I had to get rid. We were doing well. We were getting like 30 odd dogs in a day. Got like 30 wow. quid a dog. We were doing well. And, um, but it was like, do you know if like you've got a little boy and I, you bring him to barbers and I accidentally nick his ear. I go, because it happens. It happens. Like, it's just you now and again. Oh, I've just nicked his neck there, lovely. No, oh, what are you bad? I'm joking, aren't you? Karen. But if you cut someone, <laughs> yeah, if you cut someone's dog, you're going to court. It's a different fucking story, and it uh, it was hard work, and people loved the dogs more than they loved the kids. It was very difficult the dog grooming, so I decided to get rid. So I sold it, and with the money, I I made the bigger sweeps, and we literally the, when we opened it, it like an. It was it was um, it was special when yeah we were one. the first ones in Liverpool I, and I'll fucking I'll stand by this we were the first even Barber number one Langan who he come up to him said you've inspired me like he's got the biggest one of the biggest chains in the northwest maybe the north but he said you've inspired me and he he, he said that that's to me. special isn't it well yeah but we were the first ones to see because some people are offended when people try and copy what you're doing but if they're copying what you're doing or maybe you know using it's that as a blueprint it's a, it, it, it's a, it's a highest form of compliment no, really yeah, isn't it John yeah well that's it I, I, yeah that's good but I'm happy to have you know maybe been part of their history because they're really successful but um, when we opened we, we I went all out it, it was it was beautiful I remember the night before we opened there was this fella he was from london he was standing at the bus stop and i seen him this black fella it was and he, he, he's from london and he goes he's getting drawn to the shop and he's like the shutters are open and he's like he weren't even crossing where he was going he was just walking and i went you know what i mean he was going mate is this a barber shop and i was like yeah I was like, fucking hell and he went we, when he'd opened like tomorrow and he said what do you do with my barber and i'm like really wait i've never fucking seen anything like in my life he was he <laughs> Honest to God, and I thought I've done a this good job here. But we it. were the first ones to have something beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it looked absolutely And stunning. then I went from one shit. We we trebled our custom overnight. The way they say, well, there's a saying, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Give me a minute. <laughs> Go on. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. Are you like that, John? I am. If I'm going to do something... I put everything into it and even fully focused on it, I, I'm fucking all in. Yeah. Do you feel like that's, that's your character? It's in your Absolutely. state. So whether that's going to be fucking cutting a Jack Russell's ear or fucking, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You, you, you I want to be the best, or, but yeah, I want to be do. my best. Yeah, the I very don't, best. You just want, you're not, you're not in competition I with anyone. I do not else, compete with fucking anyone. All in. Look, I, and here's evidence I don't compete with anyone, right? Get on this. The, the, the career I decided to do was barbering. That only involves one person, me. I then I become a marathon runner. That's all on me. Switching on that now. You, you then, need to stop getting ahead of you, John. This is no, but then, look, <laughs> no, but then I become a bodybuilder. And that was all... Right, hang on Okay, minute. wait, wait on me. But get on this. Here, no, you? no, get on this. <laughs> but then I created an online series where I play everyone. So the only person I rely on is myself. Well, do you know what, John Wright, and I'm going to say this now, it's the first time I've ever said it on the podcast. Everything I've ever done in my life, I've always relied on me, Yeah. right? And I love this podcast a bit. I love Shake the Mic, but it's the first thing 
I've ever needed to rely on you or someone else for. Yeah, because yeah. I need somebody else to come as a guest. And that side of things, I don't like. Where anything else I've ever done, it's always been solely reliant on me. So it's like, look, if I fuck this up, it's on me. If this goes well, it's on me. If I want to make this successful, it's on me. Mm. So this is a challenge for me because it's like, I need to make this successful with you yeah. or with him. And it's not like I can build a bond on a relationship with someone and say, John, me and you are going to take this all the way to the top because I've got the time I've got with you in this chair, you're gone and it's who's next. And so I've got to make this work with everyone. Yeah. And it's fucking crazy. And that's the one thing I don't like about it because it's out of my comfort zone. I like to rely on myself. Well... I'll, I'll tell you, you know, just mention them little accolades then. I didn't mention acting, did I? No. But I'll tell you more of that in a bit. But because we're acting, I'm relying on other people. I, if I if I want to run a marathon, like 330 was the fastest I got. I knocked two hours off in a year and a half. I've done, I done five and I knocked, I knocked that out. I, I fucking smashed it, right? But, people wouldn't think you, I didn't think you were a marathon runner either, John, when I seen you, I was thinking, no, no I don't he, look like a marathon runner. No, he's not a, mar- not a yeah, marathon yeah, yeah. runner. And I had to look and look again. I'm like, I'm making sure I'm doing my research right here, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you are. Yeah, there's, I, there's I there's ran a, New York, you, I ran London three times and I finished 98 in Blackpool Marathon out of thousands of people. But I, first you're marathon... You're a man I, of many hats, aren't you, John? Why not? Okay. But with the acting game, every, I'm, I, I if I run a marathon... Or if I do a bodybuilding show, it's based on my effort, right? So the more training I put in, the better result. We're acting as it work like that. So I go to every cast and boom, 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 boom. But it's all based on someone else's decision. It's fucking in it. Yeah. So what am I going to do? Do a stop and blame the world? No. So this is this is what I do now. I'm I'm more of a producer now than I am an actor. Everyone says, every time somebody says no to me, yeah, John, I say it's my fucking fault. It's not them, it's me. I've got to work harder. I've got to make this fucking work. I've got to find a way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's down to fucking me. Yeah. I've got to find a way. Yeah. Where sometimes people say, oh, no, it's fucking him. And he said, no. He said fucking no because it went, you, you, you weren't fucking what they were looking for or you weren't, yeah, yeah. You weren't the best you could be. Yeah. So start, well, ag- start again or try and be the best you can be at least. <laughs> That's my mentality on it. I, I, yeah, but I know what you're saying, but I don't blame anyone, but it's all in my fucking hands. So I'm becoming a producer. We're making a documentary at the moment. We've got another film idea that we're going to be hopefully getting the funding for. And the next project, I'm going to set myself up as an actor. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to st- make me the star of it. But I've got to do that work first. To get the to legitimize what we do, but I'm taking it by the horns. I'm not leaving it into some fucking media person who doesn't know what they're talking about in some room. Not would not give me the job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, I'll give I'll give the job and I'll give it to me because you're creating it for yourself. I'm you're creating it for myself. Man. Yeah. I'll give me me myself the job and that's back to your creativity, John. We're going full. Here circle. we go. We're going full fucking circle. Um, just back to sweeps a minute. I suppose that will have moulded you as a person, but as an actor as well, because working with the public all day, every day, I bet you've seen so many characters coming and going. It will have developed that for you, John. It's got to have, because you're working with people, so you're seeing, yeah. <clears throat> you're seeing all, all walks of life. Because when you're working with the public, and especially on County Road, you're fucking getting all walks of life, aren't you? You are. We did in sweeps. Because we were good looking shop and we were good at what we'd done. We attracted people from around the city as well. So we had, yeah, we had all walks of life in there. <laughs> well, not saying that, meths never come. I think they thought it was too expensive. Um, that's the truth. <laughs> we, yeah, we didn't sack meths. <laughs> I don't but think it, they really go to Barbers, John. They do. <laughs> 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 but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, the goal to Ben Hurst. <laughs> He'll be more expensive than me, well, than what I was. Um, <laughs> fuck you, Ben. Honestly, fuck you. You fuck, fuck me. You, fuck you. I'm not asked. Sick of you, Ben. Fucking hell. Every time I bump <laughs> into you, you fucking kick off. You weirdo. <laughs> I'll get you because I'll have Ben followers. Give me, but you know, Ben was horrible to me. Be put yourself. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> Yeah, it goes back to what I said before. It's like different, same faces. What is it? Different faces, same eyes. 
So you learn to... But anyway, no, because when you're an actor, you draw it from you. Do you know what I mean? You draw, you draw them that rawness from you. You draw that emotion That's from you. That's one thing that you're incredibly talented with, John, and I was going to touch on it later on, right? Every single time I've ever seen you acting, I can always feel you come through, and that is very, very, very hard to do. To be somebody else while you're being yourself is, is a super talent. You see people at, when you watch actors and... They can be completely different people, and it's like, whoa, yeah. And well, like, that comes I after. Didn't see, I didn't see him in that role, or I didn't see her in that role. But the, the, the told, you lose the feel of the person with, with you, whether whether you're fucking Karen or Tick or whoever you, you, you're playing, or whether you're playing you know, a role in something else, you can always sort of still fucking feel you, you know what I mean? Like, even like uh, R. Eddie. I had I a little. Oh, you know, right. the, the depths of YouTube, haven't you? Oh, nice to see me to that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Go to the shop, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know Stop I mean? boring. Yeah, you know no. what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can still feel you. And I love that. Can, can I just make one thing clear as well? I know, like, you keep... I'm not a successful actor, you know? It's like, I do acting, but and people recognise me and people know who I am, but I'll never claim to be a successful actor. Because I'm well, not. This is this is the first one I've got to disagree on. It's, it's nah, I'm not. My it, it's it's your idea of success. Everybody's idea of success is different. Or what's your level of success? You know what I mean? It's it, it's different. Uh, well, I could be you know I could be just deemed as some some di divvy who does videos online. You know what I mean? My vision of a successful actor is someone who is in regular work, someone who's regularly working as an actor, and I'm not. Yeah, but there's other people who may be regular, but have been very, very mundane, very, very middle of the road, very, very flat. No one's ever really noticed them. We'll probably be able to go in the fucking Asda tomorrow and stand next to an actor and you'd never know they were a fucking actor. Yeah. So, you know, what's your level of success? What's your idea of success? Or, you know, you mightn't have been in fucking Hollywood movies, but... People know who you are, John, and for, for the right reasons, in my opinion. Well, that's all good and well, but I'm still not a successful actor. Mm. And that's it. So I'm not going to come on here like, like claiming to be either, because I'm not yet. I will be, but not yet. But I'll make that happen. It's happening, John. Mm. You better oh, not well. fucking forget me, you know. You better there we go. Don't again. forget your fucking roots. <laughs> hey, Don't forget well, who you are. Don't forget who you are. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm on Joe Rogan tomorrow, mate. <laughs> 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 Of uh, course I won't. Uh, I'm only joking with you. It'll be um, a fee though. <laughs> 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 oh God. <laughs> Let's get through this one first. <laughs> when did acting become serious and something you wanted to pursue as a career? When did you when when did it go from? Do you know what? Go down that acting school here and you're at that moment you told me about to be in like Yeah, you know what, I can do something with this. I'm gonna do something with this. Um, I don't know, it's like anything, it's like, you know, we said when early on in the podcast, you, you sit in this space where you're doing not, and you feel no purpose, and it's like, I think I remember the moment it was like, become a barber, then it was like, I, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna smash my marathon time, it's like, it just become me, that's ADHD by the way. That's what I'm like, John, if I get a fucking idea, it proper excites me when it's in my head. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to do that. And guess what? My whole being and everything is going into that. Yeah, but why? Fucking don't know. I'll tell you why. So, you know, before I said about the ADHD and I said about your lack of dopamine. Mm -hmm. So imagine you had a regular supply of dopamine all the time, whether it's playing Zelda or whether it's playing fucking whatever. It's You'd like be you flat, wouldn't you, though, John, do you think? No, because I've got this constant focus all the time, whether it's marathon running, bodybuilding, this, that, this, that. I have got a regular stream of this dopamine. So yeah. I know where to go for it. I'm going, I'm, I'm doing this. The dopamine Yeah, shot. I'm walking to Johnny Groats, mate, until I get to Johnny Groats. You know, I've still got this fucking buzz I'm on. And when it's over, it's like, what now? So that, but with that, you can use that to be successful. You, 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 you dip in and out as well. You think, I fucking can't wait to get here. I fucking can't wait to get here. And then when you get there, you're like, fuck. Go and find something else. Johnny Groats. Or, or it could be 
down a fucking road. It could be whatever you'd set out to do. If it becomes tough or it becomes difficult during that process, you're thinking, I can't wait to fucking get there or get it done. But then when you actually achieve what you set out to do, well, when you have, now. When you have them little moments, like, I know, I know we haven't spoke about it yet, but I knew the moment I wanted to walk around into John and Groat. I was sitting there and I went, I'm going to walk around into John and Groat. And then you check your mind, you go, yeah, yeah, that's going to work. Yeah, I'm going to fucking do it. Fuck it, I'm doing it. And that's it, you're doing it. Do you know what I mean? The people around you, John, like anyone who is close to you, and I think he's fucking mad. Him. He's impulsive. He fucking just comes with fucking absolute madness. He's mad as a box of frogs. Like, you don't know what you're going to do from one day to the next. You can think what they fucking like. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Fuck it. Did you go to college, uni or acting school? College, to be a barber. I went to an acting class in Manchester. And I never went to uni. Yeah. Where does your self-belief come from? To do what you do takes balls. And I'll take my hat off to you because you're putting yourself out there for the world to see and a lot of people feel vulnerable and they're afraid of criticism. Naysayers, I'm falling short. What are your views and perspectives on that? If people criticise me, that's none of my business at all. And I know it's so easy to say that, but often it's a reflection of them. Do you know what I mean? They'll self-loathe and then project it onto you. Or you make them feel uncomfortable. It's none of my fucking business. So other people's judgments or their opinions or you don't bother you, John? Yeah, they do bother me. But it's still none of my fucking business. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's a woman that caught to me um, the other day. Just random. I was on the whittle. And this woman goes, are you John May? And I went, yeah. And she went, can I give you a hug? And I went... Yeah, sad. And she went, John, lockdown, honest. You, honest. I, I, and she started crying. And she's like, thank you. Now, that moments, he, John, what's that like? They happen you? all the time. All the time. And um, it's lovely. And I don't let it get to me in any way. But you know, you've got some little fucking divvy sitting there who thinks he's fucking boss and all he's trying to do is impress everyone around him and then he calls me a knobhead or a ming or whatever on social media. Give a fuck. Because I've just made that woman feel like that. Yeah, and he's probably very, very upset I'm, himself, John. Yeah, That's yeah. Why ve- to be honest, I very rarely get any shit anyway. I really don't because mm. I think, you know, I walk around dressed as a woman, I clearly don't give a fuck. <laughs> so it's like, I don't think people I bother. I a lot of people love you, John, in the city. I've yeah. never, I don't have, like... I've never uh, went John May and someone's went, he's a fucking dickhead. Mm. Oh, you, it will happen, but half the time you ever met me. Yeah. Yeah. But if they actually get, give, got the time of day to get to know you, or will yeah. it be enough to get to know you? Mm. Let's touch on the internet. No, but let me finish what I'm saying. So, go on. Sometimes when people, you think to yourself, am I old hat? Because I have stopped doing what I do quite a lot, just because I, I think that's enough now. But then I've made that woman feel like that. It's not enough. Do you know what I mean? From a fan's perspective. Yeah, but then you've got people always milking it now. So what? See you later. You, you go do what you do. And what are you, a baker? Oh, you need to stop that baking, don't you? You're fucking milking it, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? It's like, fuck off. That's one thing for me, John, that does do me. I didn't... <clears throat> If someone's saying shit like that, oh, why are you doing that? Oh, blah, 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 blah. It's a Look, you just fucking do what you're doing and I'll do what I'm doing because there's no way I'd sit there and say to you, oh, why are you doing that? Oh, you shouldn't have got that one. You should have got that one over. Just fucking, I'm happy for you. And, yeah. and, just, and just be happy for me. Let's touch on the internet. Am I how you imagine me to be? No. Are you I? You know. I'm a lot deeper, a lot more fucking miserable. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm fucking miserable. Cunt, no. <laughs> no, I'm not miserable, but I'm pretty. No, um, you are different, John. So to, to to what um to what I imagined, um, but I'm happy about that because it's interesting for me and it gives me that. Li- it's, it's what I love. It's okay. gi- uh, that's what the old reason why I'm I'm here. Yeah. Let's touch on the internet. It's a magical tool, and I suppose it's helped you really establish yourself as an actor and get your career right on track. Ironically, without it, we wouldn't be sitting in these chairs doing this podcast right now. However, it's created massive comparison, and a lot of the time, with a false reality. Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Move on. I'm messing. No. Uh, yeah. Every, it's. <sighs> you can't win, can you? You can't win. Because if you go on social, social media is a, a mini vlog, a blog. It's a mini blog or vlog. It's a platform and able to express yourself and express who you are. And 
if you showboat yourself too much, you're a show off. But a lot of them people are just living a fake life and it's not real. But people think that's normal to be like that within Scott. It's like, what do you mean? Yeah, but it's not real, is it? It's like, well, okay. And then you've got people who are honest and express themselves. Either end of the spectrum, you get criticised. Can't win. No? Well, it depends what way you look at it. Because you are bad. winning, aren't you? You know what I mean? You've won with it. You've done fucking... You, you, you've done well with it, John. You, you know what I mean? You've got a decent following. There's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be people out there who say, oh, well, you know, as we said before, you shouldn't be doing this. If you had a message... What if I won? Well, you've won in your own space, in your own place, haven't you? In the sense of... The I'm way just said, being me. Yeah. And if people like it, and that's sad. And they do, and that's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes on the internet, it's like, mm, well, as you say, you, you know, if you don't do enough, then you're not enough. Can you be too fucking much? You know what I mean? It, it's made the world a smaller place because if you were to post something, everyone sees it. If you don't post it, not everyone sees it. Like, I keep a lot of my life private, you know what I mean? If I'm exercising, I, I'll exercise where some people will go to the gym and they'll be like the selfies and that and all that, you know what I mean? And, and whatever. And some people will have, like, a vlog a day, whole day, with what they're having a coffee in the morning, you see them what they're having for the fucking dinner, you see, you know, where they're going with the mates and whatever. I, I think that's what it's about. And that's great. And, and, and that's what some people do. Some people do a little bit fucking less and, you know, whatever. But it's a place to be, to be judged. It's a place to be out there. You're putting yourself out there for everybody to see. And some people can feel... Um, Vulnerable by that, I feel. I just think people, they put too much into creating this false. Who are you? Yeah, are you going to post who you really are? Or are you no, they, they don't, though, do they? You know no. what I mean? And then what I'm saying is, then you've got the tragedy of people comparing themselves with other people who aren't real. Do you, do you, have you noticed? I don't know if you looked me up, but I'm not on social media right now. No, you're not. I was no. thinking to myself, what's happened there? That John May's disappeared on me. Yeah, I, I want to go and focus on, on my work a little bit, you know what I mean? But I'm sitting there. I'm addicted to this fucking stupid game, by the way. And I'm on my phone constantly playing this fucking stupid games, like this symbiote who eats people, but I'm fucking can't. I get enough of it, right? <laughs> but anyway, but I'm sitting there on Instagram and I'm, you know, my flat might be a mess or my car's a mess or I'm ignoring my daughter. And it's like, I'm just sitting there investing in other people's lives. Like that, constantly standing, like rolling along with them. And the other week I went, oh, fuck this, fuck this. And I just, I want a break from it. Yeah. I'm I'm sitting in a bit of a mess or I haven't done my jobs and I'm fucking I wanted to, I wanted to delve through your Insta as well to do a bit of research. And ah. I was like, what's he fucking playing, Ali? What's he doing to me, yeah? I'm just having a break from it. It's good for you though, isn't it? And if it's good for you, it works. I know, but yeah. But I've had things coming up where it's like, I've done a thing with Jamie Webster the other week. I've done... Bosch. The Liverpool... Ten and was, for the People and that. Yeah. What Boss a fucking night. album as well, by the way. Ten for the People is a fucking belter. Why has it got 11 sacks on it, lad? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> but it, we had a bod that was Boss that night. And it, no, I've had things coming up and stuff where I've had to have it, but I haven't at the moment. So I, I've just come off it for a little bit. Um... If you had a message to someone... No, but then, wait there. I've had about... I've had about 20 phone calls going, all right, John. Are you all right? Are you okay? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. What's up? I've just noticed you're off social media. Yeah. Are you all right? It's like, yeah, I'm sad. If you had a message to somebody watching this now who's got an idea or a concept or a plan but is afraid of being judged or public failure, what would it be? Someone's sitting in the fucking bedroom, John, and they want to do something with themselves, but they don't, they're a bit afraid to put it out there. I don't know. I know what you're saying. Well, for, coming but from say somebody... someone was really well, shit at something, you know what I mean? And then he, <laughs> and then he done it, and I'm like, you said do it, and I don't know you were going to be shit. <laughs> No, just do you, innit? Just... No, but no, look, no, I need, I need more than that. Man. You can't fucking do that, you? No, no, from from a person who's who, who, who's put themselves out there in that way. Um, I haven't put myself out there. I've just 
been me and maybe you... attracted attention. Well, it's when I there. I haven't put myself out there more than anyone else. Okay. Really, okay. think about it. Okay. I actually post less than most the average person. Yeah, but it's went further than the average person. So what I'm saying is, if there's a, <laughs> if, there's, if, there's, if there's a fucking if there's someone in uh, out there now, I'm thinking, do you know what? I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna start something here or whatever. But they're a bit worried, they're a bit afraid. What would, would you have a message? No, don't fucking do it. <laughs> people used to say people used to phone me. Like, people used to get in touch me. Go, John, I, I, I'm thinking about being a barber, and I go, don't bother. And you go, yeah, but I, it's my advice, don't bother. But if someone had told me at the start, I'd be like, nah, I'm doing it. But <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Do you ask me advice? That's it. You do you. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> but um, okay. what's me? No, but it's just I don't know. It's like um, I know what you're saying, but I was I'm going, expecting something. Yeah, I'm, go, like, I'm going. You know I'm going. What, what you always be inspirational, do don't you? Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know what? You, you know, if you feel it, you you know, you stomach go out and you do it. You you know. Don't hate, you know, fuck the haters, you know, just be you. <laughs> and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just do what you enjoy doing with the people you enjoy being with. Thank you. No, <laughs> no but I don't want to encourage someone who's fucking... I don't know. I don't know. Just, that's what I wanted then. That's, it, that, just that do what you enjoy. <laughs> but if there's something telling you a reason not to do it, you know, maybe explore that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, damn it. You know, I'm thinking of fucking... Really thinking about like uh, getting roadkill, you know, John, and dissecting it, and I'll see what happens in that. Go for it. Know what I mean? <laughs> it's one of them. It's like I don't know. I'm, I'm fucking warm now, but I love that though. <laughs> hey, they say you know, they say creative people the fuck up. You are <laughs> <laughs> just do what you enjoy and fuck everyone else. <laughs> you, you're gonna judge it anyway, but. <laughs> Uh, Why you ask what anyone else thinks anyway? Uh, right. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't even know whether to ask you the next one. Oh, ask me the question. <laughs> What's the best advice? It's gonna be don't fucking do it. What's the best advice you've received as an actor? It is it is from a casting director, Dan Hubbard. Because I've been to every fucking casting for years and it's cost me a bomb going to London. Boom, 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 boom. And I was, I got, I got loads of commercials. I got loads of bit jobs, but I never had the break, and I was getting sick of it. I thought, you know, I'll eventually cross this road into success. I've just got to keep waiting at the lights. And I said to him, um, "What do we need to do?" He said, "You need to make your own stuff." He said, "Look at all the top actors, whether it's Tom Cruise or this. They're all the big, they're all the executive producers on their projects. All the big actors create their own stuff." And that's the path I'm going to go down. Well, that's like life in a nutshell, isn't it? When you're waiting for somebody else to create something for you or allow you to create a fucking mess no, with you. Do you it. can't do it. Yeah, you've got, like, to, I, you've got to be you. I wasted too much time on that. Who inspires you? Um, who inspires me? Um, I don't know. Sounds really put myself. <laughs> it is. The I'm new. It's the truth. I'm the only one. I'm inspired by like, I'm inspired by certain comedians. I'm inspired by um, Ricky Gervais. Ricky um, Gervais Peter yeah. Kay was always my favourite, but... Peter Kay. I know, Legend. but I don't know what's happened with him. Um, Paddy McGuinness inspires me. In what way? Elaborate. I want what he's got. What single ladies reveal yourself? Come well, on, Christy McGuinness <laughs> wouldn't be a bad one. Like, but um, no, I, I want, I want it, the, what he's got. The vision of my success. I, I want that house. I want a house like his. I, I want, I want that life. Do you? Yeah, I do. Well, yeah. John, nineteen girls have left the light on, so we've got, we're off to a good start. That'd be great, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> no, yeah, no. I, I want. I would like his level. That if I got to his level of success, um, I'd feel I've succeeded in that. Am I right in saying that you've always wanted your own TV show? I would like a, my own sitcom, yeah. Is that a goal? It's going to happen. It's on the book. No, there's a, there's a few that? little lines in the fire. <laughs> but here's the thing. Once I've got me little success, they've got me a few little successful things out that I'm creating, I can make that happen myself. And I will. Damn right. Rather than sitting around hoping someone else will give me a chance, I'll create my own. Let's talk about the early days and starting out. Did you realise how hard it was going to be over your naive, John? To what? The Acton world. 
don't know. I don't think I've ever been naive to it. Did first you... job, first audition I ever went up for, well, it went. Have you got any funny audition stories or things that have went completely wrong, like car crashes? <laughs> or do we need another phone? I turned up, I turned up at one. Go on, hit me, John. I wrote on my, on my CV that I can play the guitar. And it turns up to the casting and I even brought me my guitar. I, I can't play the guitar. And I was just like, I was trying to play Blackbeard. I was like, ding, 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 with it, with it. Ding, ding, ding. I'll get it now. Ding, ding. And he was like, nah, I don't <laughs> And it was another time. I got a job in Chile playing an American, Jason could you, Cox. Could, could you sing? I can sing. To, I don't yeah, sing. Oh, yeah, I've heard a little bit. Yeah, I can tune now. Oh, yeah, go on, go on. Jason Cox. Yeah, and, and I played this American fella in Chile. And, um, when I got back, we aged him and got you an audition, got you an audition. You know, I was playing American, I was like sound. And I went, turns up, went to London and I went into this room and like I'd done it. And the fella just laughed at me and went, call on an American accent. And I went, I thought, you cheeky cunt. Could I, now you've got, you can't do this to me, John. Now I've got to hear. I can't do an American accent. I've got to hear what, what you thought was an American accent. <sighs> I could do loads of accents, but I can't. Well, I can't. Huh? Well, give me, give, give me, me a Jason region. Cox. Give me an area. Any area, the area that no, you No, it doesn't rolled, work like that. The area you rolled up with, the area you aimed at, the, the accent you tried with in the... It, Give it, me something it. to say. Um, <laughs> now you're asking me. See, there we go. The heat is on, isn't it? The, the pressure is off. on. Peter... No, I can't do it. <laughs> Peter Piper picked a pack of pale peppers. No. <laughs> <laughs> and those... I can't do it. It's turned into Obama. <laughs> Peter Piper... Pick the pack of pal peppers. <laughs> and those pickled peppers that Peter Piper picked. They are. They were right. sucking. Now it's Obama. It's an Obama impression. Most of all, they were American. So <laughs> should have just done that. Have they got, have they got, got the job? Yeah, they got the job, yeah. And every time I get a casting through saying American accents, I go, oh. <laughs> But if you're South African, it's not going to be sound. Give us a South African then? No. You don't talk, no, that's just no South African. Um, <laughs> ah, yeah. No, they say yeah a lot. Yeah, that's what they talk. Yes, forget it. Like, the fuck, are you making a show on me now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Um, you've done some bits, haven't you? You've been around. You dirty tickets. No. <laughs> I've done lots of commercials. Uh, like. I've seen you making an happen on Sheila's wheels. Fuck it. That was the first moment I like pinch me moment, if you want to call it that. We were sitting outside. It was a summer's day, and we we'd been filming. It was where was it? Elstree Studios, I think. But uh, I was sitting outside with this big director having breakfast. Me, this director, and the three Sheila's Wheels women all in the kit, and I'm like. <laughs> <"This is mad." laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that was the first. Wow, this is mad. How did, do you know what, like them, the Sheila's Wheels moments and that, John? How did they come to be? What happens? I get an audition the... off my agent and I go, that was a good one. I got paid. Yeah, I was 17 grand for that. Yeah. When he comes with stuff like that, John? Why did you presume it was a he? Okay. Are they a they? No, it's a ah. shit. <laughs> 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 we won't get down that road. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. When she calls with something like that. What yeah. made you presume it was a she? I'm going to ask. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Just call them they. I'm okay, ask. yeah. When they call. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that a fucking like a buzz moment for you, John? Where they say, yeah, Sheila's wheels here, you know what I mean? Or when whatever, I get the at job. The, at the time. Or at first, you're a bit like, oh, fuck, yeah. But then what, obviously if you land it, it's different. My focus is shifting now. It is. It's... My focus is shifting on creating my own stuff. So I don't get as excited when a casting comes through. Well, you've had a few, haven't you? You've had Corrie, you've had a few appearances there. Cashier, delivery man. Um, I've been in Corrie four times. I don't, yeah, I kept getting back at the same character. Um, Go on, tell us a little bit. You've done the best for that. You don't, who's Derek? You've done how simple. You know Derek, don't you? Yeah, who's Derek? Yeah, that went mad. Who's that? I've done loads. Maggie's. Um, um, loads. Beth Red one was woeful. Beth okay, Red. You've done Beth Red, didn't you? Yeah, the Beth Red had. Mm, nah. Um, That's what inspired me to do the bodybuilding show. I was that fat on that. 
thought I can't do this. Do you ever look back at yourself and you're like, yeah, you do, you, that John May doesn't like this John May and all that? Ten John Mays ago. Um, <laughs> no. But it can, does it help you move? Help you help you grow? Evolve, oh, mate, progress? you know what? Eventually, I'm going to have that house party McGuinness has got. I'm going to find the woman of my dreams. I'm going to have, and I'm going to be able to make what happen what I want. Right, that's what's going to happen. It's happening, John. You're doing it. No, now? it's not. I haven't. Got, I I can't just click my fingers and get this producer to want to do. That. I can't do all that. But you're but making what? it happen. Everything. I will get that. I will, because I'm in control of that. Um, but every little John May has led up to that, and I'm grateful for them all. So the fat John May made the bodybuilder John May. We're going to touch on the bodybuilder, John May, in a minute. So you've done the best for that, you've done who's there. Like the medium fat, John May, now. Slender, John May, if you're Fucking asking me. Fucking me, come on. Very well. Flame uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Playing> with me. <laughs> you got him. Uh, already, the clock. I shouldn't be alive. The Postcards. clock. Postcards. Will. 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 Will was my first job. That was a £30 million film, that. With Bob Hoskins <sighs> and... I had to spend three weeks in Istanbul with Kenny Douglas. What the fuck? Where am I? Wow, <laughs> how did that come to be? I just had the audition. What just was went Kenny like? Kenny Douglas was sad. He was calling me John and that. I was like... Yeah, when, you, when Kenny's calling you John and that, you... He's going, join! Come me over here. I just didn't sound like him. I remember him shouting, you going, join! Join! And I'm like, me? And he's like, hey, come over here. I was like, fucking hell, Kenny Douglas. That was boss. Because he was like, he was like your granddad when you were a kid, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, am I right in saying Doctor Who? Yeah. It's in Doctor Who. Wow. Yeah. How did that come to be? Another call from them. They. <laughs> <laughs> just an audition. I just got the job and it was great. And I was with John Bishop. And he knew John who Bishop. was, yeah. He was like, oh, fucking John me. I was like, no way. This is boss. Yeah, closer. I made up him in Doctor Who. Mm. I get fat See, mail I off Doctor look, Who. I was looking at it going, I fucking better make sure to check this again because I don't want to look on to you when I say this to him. <laughs> um, thanks, thanks for the expectations of me. Yeah, I have belief in you, John, as I said. Um, <clears throat> rejection and setbacks. You must get a lot of it in the game you're in. Maybe not so much nowadays, but in the past, John. How do you deal with it and how do you overcome it? It's, you're an actor, you're going to get rejected over and over again. Accept it and deal with it. It's going to happen. What makes you keep turning up every day? Where does the drive and the hunger come from? That drive is dying, I'm not going to lie, because it's it's changing direction. But I, I'm telling you now, like I used to go to every casting. I used to go to every audition. I used to try my best, right? And I asked myself the question, Why? And the reason was, when my agents would go, um, congratulations, John, you've been uh, booked on this, and my body would literally fill with dopamine. I was chasing that high. I was chasing the win. That's what I was chasing. It's boss, though, it's it wasn't about the job. It wasn't about the money. It's about it, wasn't the win. About, it was that win. Only because it was giving me dopamine. It's the moment. I was the best. Okay, then. I finished in the top one. Let's move on that, then. Let's talk about lockdown. But it wouldn't resent someone else for getting it. But I won that one. And that's what gave me the buzz. You and that's it. why I got on the train every time. Kept you going. That was, yeah. the, that was the feed, the fire. Yeah. Let's talk about lockdown and corona mums. Okay. Yeah, baby. The good stuff, the juicy gear. Where did the idea come from? To do the characters. Mm. It goes back to that conversation with that casting director and it goes back to having control of sailing my own ship. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, I had, I wrote a short film called Just. It's about the Catholic Church and it's about abortion. Six minute number on um, nice. YouTube. Have you watched it? Right, it wasn't watched shot it, very well because that was like a part of an application. It weren't the finished product, but yeah. Anyway, the idea with that was is that we were going to go off and... It's wonderful your work, you know, John. I've looked at it from many different angles and not just the people that other... Not just the angle that other people look at it from. And yeah. Honest to God, it's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, nice one, mate. 
Thank Go you. on. Sorry for, the, for, for, for de- derailing you there. You it's said right. about just. Yeah, so the idea was, it was like, right, I need to go down this path where we make our own stuff. So I thought, right, let's write this short film. Let's film it. Let's fucking get funding off the BFI. Let's showcase it. Let's be just successful. Let's show that we can do it. On the back of that, we can go and get funding to make a film. We're in a bath there. Boom. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> right? Anyway, so we're making this and thought, right, let's, let's got to make our own stuff. This is how the, the way we've got to go. And uh, then lockdown come. Lockdown come and it's like, well, there's that out the fucking window. And I was training for a bodybuilding show as well during lockdown. Trained for three months for that and then lockdown come, I got cancelled. You looked in incredible shape, by the way. Yeah, that was 2018. I was like, that's not him. Yeah. Punch full soul shot, dude. <laughs> joking, Everyone joking. thinks that. No, because on my no, I, I looked and I looked again, and I was like, no, that is him. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, <laughs> it was me. But um, yeah. So I just I did have idea. I had ideas to do a Liverpool based sketch show, and I had like, I I had I had this fella, so he like he was like because it was just based on the lads out the gym. To you probably talk like that, yeah. And it's like, lad, yeah, and lad, just lad and all that. And like, I thought, right, well, I'll have him. I thought, I'll have them. Like, yeah, just talking about training these dogs and cars. It's like, that's all he talk about. And um, and what else do I have? I had this fella. I never used him, but he was called Keith Slice. And he was a radio presenter. And he was going to be Pete Price. But that never happened. <laughs> I had a few characters that I wanted to do this thing anyway. Oh, yeah, I had a Craig as well. I had this Scouse fella who would, like, drop the out. So we'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean, mate? And then I got this polo. So it was like, I'd always make him out to be a Scouser. <laughs> and then he'd drop the out. I know everyone he was like speaking Craig, to would go... because he's a bit fucked up. But everyone loves Craig. I love Craig. Because he's vulnerable. He doesn't make anyone feel uncomfortable. When you first played Karen, because I think Karen was yeah. the first one to well, come that was on it. the screen. Do you know when you first played Karen... Corona, get in. <laughs> no, but it was like... I need more, John. No, but that's what it was. It was... I remember doing this sketch. I said, there's going to be a baby boom, John. Look, this look. Because we didn't know what lockdown was, did we? But no, like the week before... It was a fucking strange time. Yeah. It and was everyone, a boss time, no. I, I liked loved it. loved every minute of it. I loved it. I loved it. It was yeah. like Christmas all the fucking time. Yeah. You didn't was, know what day it was. Which was, which was like, you know, when it's Christmas and you're off for that period of time, Tuesday, Sunday, Sundays, Monday, Mate, it's all I'm the fucking the world same, it? stood still. It, That's what it, it was. That's what we lived through, John. When you first played, Karen, did you know what you'd found? No, I'd, I'd slept on the couch and I woke up in the morning and I just, I, I thought of lockdown, I'd seen everyone running around, getting ready, you know, getting like running the Aldi before it all shuts or before anything runs out with the toilet rolls. So I seen it like that. Like, it was getting ready for Christmas. So I just done this sketch on Snapchat. It was like, you're all done for lockdown. Ah. And then I done, done this other woman. I've only got to get a few bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was like that. So I done these two women. Oh, well, I, I've, seen, I've seen the deep fucking Chicago Town pizzas. Yeah, there's some up there. I love you better already up the garden. Like, it was like that. And then I done that. <laughs> But then I had a captive audience then, because everyone was sitting in the house on the phone. And that one done reasonably okay. Go on. And then I done another one where they're talking about, I don't know what they were talking about. Oh, yeah, it was fucking, what was it? Quarantina. You know, like I just done it with <laughs> the like house party. And, and then I went to my barbers to look for a, I didn't need, we were getting grants and I needed my fucking council tax number or something off the council. I remember opening this drawer and I went, oh no, this goes back to the sketches I was going to do. I was going to do Scout's Cavemen. It was funny. And then I opened the drawer and I went, and there was this big wig in there. And I thought, right, I'm going to give it a fella. This is us. Yeah. And that's when Kenny. I brought Kenny Corona in. What are you on about? You know, my mate from down south, you know what I'm on about, lads. You're on it. You're on it. You know, you know what I'm on about, my mate, lads. You're like, you know what I mean? Is Ma, yeah, works for the M. Oh, D lad. I put that goes back to that lad. I reckon Kenny's my favourite. I love. I, I lo- oh, Kenny's great. Everyone loves Turkey. He's like, I'll fucking burn him. Uh, Turkey's a bastard, isn't he? You know dickhead. what I mean? Yeah. In here, you get to see what they have for the breakfast, lad. <laughs> Some heavy camels in here, lad. <laughs> but 
I do well, like him. Yeah. Kenny's fucking boss. Did you ever go to my live show? No, and oh, I fucking wish I did, you the know. The Kenny show was boss. It was just a big conspiracy uh, theory uh, talk. Uh, well, like, you know, lads, hey, Elizabeth, uh, Liz, Liz, you know what I mean, lads? Yeah. Obviously, fucking queen, queen of the lizards, lizards lads. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's got so many kids, lads. Yeah, because it got... says the R on her knickers. That's an R one, that's an R joke. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you're coming with them and it's just... No, but then, get on this, so it was like, <laughs> it, like it, the people on my social media watched it. It was like, it was sad. And then I brought the Kenny Corona one in and then I just thought, I just riffed this fucking... I put, I put the phone on me radiator and I just riffed this thing like he was on the phone. I was like, lad, there's batteries in the birds, lad. And what else was it? <laughs> lad, it's on death hole. Just like my mate's ma, yeah, works for the M-O-D, lad. And I'd just done all this bullshit, <laughs> yeah, right? I remember that. And then I put it on. And I've been, like, we got a mate from Manchester. I went, hey, good. He's like, this is funny. He's like, I don't think that's that funny, John. I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll put it on anyway. And uh, it went, fuck off. It went through the roof. What was the feeling like? when you got that initial response, John, for the very first time, because it did differently to anything you'd ever fucking done before, hadn't it? What was that like? Um, I'm, it was it was nice. It was... Boss, it's got to be. It was, I was... When you've spent your whole life invested in something like... Look, it, something I've created has got a positive response. That's a good thing. It's boss, John. Do you know what I mean? But get on this, I was in the Asda. This is like the day after I'd done it. I was in the Asda and it was like taxi drivers and they were all huddling, laughing. And I was then just walked past me, heard them all laughing their heads off, all watching this video. And I just heard, M-O-G, lads. And I went, they're watching me. me. That's mad. But then, yeah, and then it just started to really, and my Instagram just went boom, 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 boom. I remember I had a nap. Yeah, I had a nap for like, I had a nap for about 40 minutes and I had... I'm sure he had like 6,000 more followers in like within four minutes, uh, 40 minutes or something at that time. I loved it though. I loved it. I fucking genuinely did. It was I, like, I, I like, me, me bird like loved like fucking a right and all right. that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it off it absolutely to fucking, it was just. But it's it, being able to notice them little things. So it's like. It's relatable as well though, because we all know, yeah. we all know a, a, a fucking, a Craig, a Karen. A but Tick. I'm revealing things because I think a lot of people from the world don't even know, know about the O. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you know no, what I mean, though? No, oh, yeah. And it's like... <laughs> you can't do that. Because they thought their accent was the same. <laughs> They're not. And then they went, oh, shit, it's not. But I've revealed certain things. Mm. It's amazing. It, 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 do you know what's mad as well? You're taking things really seriously in the past and put your heart and soul into your acting and, you know, never really got the recognition you, you sort of deserve. <coughs> and then you fucking have a fuck about and lo and behold, it takes off. Yeah. Strange life like that, isn't but it? But not in the arena I wanted to. No, but it's getting you in the right direction to get in that fucking arena because it helps. It will be part of my fucking itinerary. It might be part of my, what's it called when you've got loads of like weapons? It's just, it's part of me. <laughs> Arsenal. Yeah, Arsenal now. That's what it is. Well, what have you it's done, John? Tool in the well, box. I've done this. Sold out fucking. The, I've sold out this calf. I've sold the Olympia out twice. I've done this. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, sold that oh. out, girl, yeah. Twice. Yeah, twice. Yeah, could have done a third, but couldn't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's great. It's like, you know, I, I, I'm not, who else has done that? The ideas you have as well, John, fucking, they blow me mind. Like, and it's the little things, you know, like, make one tens, one ten. Oh, yeah. Again. That was Albie, like, that joke like, to you know me. He gave me that. Yeah, but it's like, you, 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 you fucking, you come with them, like, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Prime Minister one? Yeah. It was great, that oh. one, eh? Yeah, hey, lads, and I'll bring you in. Yeah, they're all in be... crocky now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking all that, they're all there. Gene Sullivan, Gene, Jimmy's there. Baby Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kylie. Yeah. Big cat over there. Bronze, oh, Lindsay. Mitch, oh, no. They're all there now. All in, no, they'll pay tax on that boat, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Little backhander and yeah. that. They'll be paying sack. And I'll bring me <laughs> in. Me confidence and constantly here. Uh, and all Lemo. that. I told you, lads, <laughs> didn't I, what? And what else was it? <laughs> Yeah, and we want him. Um, yeah, we want Craig from. What is it? Admit, what is it? The Minister of Education will be Craig from Big Brother. 
Yeah. Just a little. And the national anthem's going to get into fourth as well. We're going to have <laughs> yeah. a, a class of yeah. <laughs> And we'll be moving the office up north to a lovely, lively Liverpool in Cape Town. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> in Cape Town. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> uh, is that what keeps you going, John? No, when you have a vision, you have a moment. How do you stay creatively inspired? I'm focused on me, me new business now, and that that's getting this documentary off the ground, and it's I want to get the next project to the ground. Look, I think the characters and social media, as far as I'm concerned, run its course now. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see more. I'll tell you, I want to want to do. I'll do. I'll do little bits, but you know, I've just made this Home Alone thing. We're gonna come to that. But because... wait, if it had made that two years ago, it'd have blew up, and it hasn't blew up. Because social media doesn't work like that anymore. It's fucked up, it's though, long John, form. because I just don't know how. And we're going to come to that because I've got like a bit of a section there where I wanted to talk to you actually about that. <laughs> if I do a 30-second video, it might do well. But if you write something that's well-written, well-put-together, got a story structure and people can invest in the characters, that's no good for social media. No, because they want everyone wants everything. It's quick. gonna be instant gratification. So the only place that's gonna fit now is on TV. Yeah. So I can either try and go and relive that feeling of lockdown, like what you just said. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. And it doesn't mean I'm not talented. I just don't like the kid with ADHD. He doesn't fit in the school. My stuff doesn't fit for social media anymore. You, you're aware of that, though. So yeah, yeah. It, that, that, that can only be a good thing. You it know. can only go on TV. I can't, I, I'm sick to impressing Sharon from Skem or Tracy from Kirkdale. It, they're not going to get me anywhere. What about Sorry. What about you know what I mean? No but, no, but it's like, it's a means to an end. I've, I've showcased myself now. And let's, put on, let's get it on TV. Are you impulsive? Do you act no. on it straight away? Do you know, like, say, if you get an idea? Oh. In that in that sense, John, they are, you're in the house now and you think about fucking, you, you, you think about Karen and you think, fuck, do you just, like, bang it in there straight away? You know what I mean? Girl, are you, are you doing it or are you fucking, do you think about it a little bit before you do it? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say, I'm not, I'm not impulsive anymore, no. Do you prepare or do you, to get into character or do you fucking straight in there, John? I'll go straight into character, but I prepare. What we used to do, we'd have a storyline and I'd just improvise it and that's where a lot of the gold comes from. But going forward, if I want to write for TV and film, I need to, you need to write it. Before we get to the writing, do you know with the acting, John, do you know when you go in there, say if it's some sort of fucking cast or something or whatever, will they say to you, right, I want you to be a Scottish bus driver, blah, 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 and you're just in there now, and you're like, hey, right, pal, yeah, it's going to be yeah, fucking... Yeah, if it's a minutes. commercial, yeah. And, and can they just keep changing it and saying they want you to be this, they want you to be that? Potentially, yeah. If it's a commercial, usually if it's... And are you ready, John? Are you just there? Like, yeah, yeah I'll try my best. Yeah. Yeah, I might be shit. So you might you ask me to do an American accent, for fuck's sake, so do you know what I mean? I asked you to be a Scottish bus driver. You, I'm not a fucking performing dog, lad. I'm not going to be fucking doing all accents for you for biscuits, do you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I'll give you 20 quid, lad. Go on, then. It'll have to be 30. It'll have to be 30. Go on, then. Um... You've got some boss characters, Kenny, Karen, Kirsty, Craig, Derek, Twerk. And I love all of them, to be honest, but if you had to pick one, John, who's your favourite? Okay, well, shall I narrow it down then? Um, Kenny's voice hurts me. Don't particularly like Twerk. I like Derek. Derek's cool. That's about so I like Ke I, Ke I don't know, Kenny's Kenny's my baby. Kenny's the one who sort of started it all. I don't I like Kenny. I like Kenny. Kenny, Craig, and Derek. There you go, to Neil Seed as well. Neil Seed. I like <laughs> Oh did you ever see the Turk? The Turk fella? Mehmet. Did you watch Panic and Paradise? The one we done in Turkey? Yeah, yeah. And he had is, is he the geezer who had the suit on, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the edge of the cliff. Yeah. And all that, yeah. Did you watch Come the on. end when you're next to the birds? No, I never oh, seen it. Oh, you yeah. need to watch the end. Yeah, no, I never seen watch it. Watch the end. I want to go it's back. It's fucking home. horrible. Every <laughs> hour. <laughs> I left ah. these two chippy birds, boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll tell you. Craig. 
He's so easy to play. He's boss, Craig. Yeah, he's, he's so like me. Would you say Craig's more relatable to you than the others? I'll tell you. Each one of them, Craig, Kenny, Derek and Karen, they're a part of me. But Turkey Teeth isn't. I had to observe him and I had to make him. But Turkey's a popular But then you run a risk of becoming city. them. You know what I mean? It's funny. Craig, like, an, like, Turkey gives me a power. Women love him. It's weird. He's a dickhead, but they love it. Yeah. It's he's... Like, Frankie Allen told me, isn't it? His name's not Frankie Allen. I can't remember his name, but Frankie Allen has become Frankie Allen. Isn't Frankie Allen's real name Frankie no. Allen? Frankie Allen's a character he plays, but he used them to, and he won't mind me saying, but he found a confidence when he was... Frankie Allen? Yeah. Because it... it when you're actually me, Frankie Allen, is he different in real life, John? No, he's just a nice man. He's just sad. Is he still fucking nuts, though, like, in the same he way as you? He's chill. He's, he's, not, he doesn't, he's not out to make you laugh all the time. He's just a nice guy. But he's, um, yeah, he told me he, he, his character that he used, he used him as a, as a mechanism thing, but he said he's become him. Mm. You've used them as well, haven't you? In one of the sketches you don't, I can't remember. But he come yeah, in the well, garden, didn't he? Yeah, fucking soft land and all that. You, Where's you're on the phone. Yeah, you're on the phone, phone, aren't you? Yeah, but we we done a show together, so with his lads, Will, we we created that. I love how when you're on the phone as well, John. <laughs> Will, no, but Will was like, yeah, just do a video. But I was like, nah, no, we need to we need a bit of depth. It's like, you know, and I in my head. He was playing Turkey's dad, so there was, I had to find, explore the vulnerability. I had to explore why Turkey's the way he is. And that's why he is, because his dad's fucking abuse. Do you know what I mean? That's where I have to go with it. Would you mind, yeah? Yeah. I love Whereas, how, like, you pause and all that, no, when you're on the phone, like, like he's talking, no, lad, and look, but listen, and I, I, it's, it's yeah. fucking, it's quality, John, what you do is really is. The ideas for the characters are they based on real people. I've got to ask you this, because I've read this, and I don't know whether this is right, or what, is Kenny Corona based on an old girlfriend? No, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> she Cause she be. used to talk like that. <laughs> what? She had to shout louder. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, so it was like, I don't know if it burst your mic, but that's where Kenny goes that from. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> What are you on about? <laughs> That's me, mate, Wally, that. <laughs> so, the real people. <laughs> so but it's that's... funny, like, I've based Turkey on about five different people. There is four. And each one of them, people have come up to me and went, hey, John, funny that Turkey to eat, lad. <laughs> Hey, you get dickheads like that, don't you? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but you, yeah. do you know what? You know what you're saying before. Um, initially, when I started doing these, I thought I was gonna get shit because the I was, I did take a leap. I thought I was gonna get shit for this because I was like, I was ripping people, but I never. The people who I thought would be offended by it, they're the ones who loved, loved it the most. Because they could relate to it the yeah, most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything relatable, we like. Yeah, but I thought they're the ones who'd be offended. I, st- I was going to do this that's character. Why, that's why you're made from Manchester. You said they are. Listen, you tested the material with and you said they are. Have a little look at this. What you doing? It's not really that Yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. Can't relate to it. Someone said to me the other day, it's like, it's a niche of a niche. Maybe that's why I was a court on Nationwide. It is a niche of a niche, isn't it? Yeah, but that's the thing. I feel like I feel like anything's got to have relevancy to some people. Otherwise, it's it, relatability. <sighs> otherwise, it's got no relevancy. But get on this. I was, and maybe it hasn't been at the exposure. I was in London doing a live show, and there was a guy behind the bar in this venue, and he was Irish. And I thought London was going to be the worst crowd, and it went. It was fucking went down great. And this Irish guy, I had no idea who it was. He was just coming to work. Blah, 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 blah. He must see this day. And, and this guy was watching this guy while I was performing behind the bar and he was keeling over laughing. He was, he didn't know who it was, you know, nothing, but he would, the material worked. It weren't just people who liked John May. Yeah, it was the gear you were doing. It, it was good. And I thought, this can travel. But I need to, I've saturated my little area now. I'm not growing anymore on social media. 
Have you got any memorable moments, John, in terms of interaction? This is just off the top of this, but like in terms of interaction with people. You're going to say Darren Till, aren't you? Darren Till was funny. Yeah, we done it with Darren Till. Because me and Jazz used to have a podcast together and Darren coming and um, I just done a bit of turkey with him. But it was just, he was just claiming to know Darren, you know what I mean? I remember you when we were kids, lad. That's Kevin, but it's like, yeah. And what was Darren saying? No, it's just, it's just. Darren's it, just laughing, looking at yeah, you. Yeah, Darren, he was funny. He, he loved it. It was great. No, I, th- I think one of my favorite times was um, when Craig had a fight. Did you ever see the Craig where he, he in the alleyway? Yeah, when he, when he, when he fucking battled everything. Yeah, that's the first time I stepped it up. I got a crew in. Yeah, when he got out the car and he fucking he ironed everyone out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first time I stepped it up. So it was like, that was me bar now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You'd set the bar, John. You'd raise the bar. I raised the bar to that, yeah. Talking of real people, I've seen a picture of you and you look ripped. And I thought, wow, can't be you. And it was. Um, and you were in incredible shape. What drawn you towards the bodybuilding and stuff like that? I read of it. I was really fat on it, and it was I was the fat yoke. I was the um, funny fat man. I didn't want to be the funny fat man. Other people would benefit from that, not me. I didn't want to do it. And uh, I seen that advert, and I went right to it enough. So I started training with this lad called Jay Pato, and he went to teach. Is this my right? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I can hear you. I started training with this lad Jay Pato in a gym called Tier Pro, and Jay done a bodybuilding show. And I thought, fucking hell, well, in Jay, I had no idea. And I didn't think people like us done shit like that. And then it was men's physique. And then uh, I went to the gym and I said to Carl, a coach, and I was really overweight. And I walked in and I went, I want to do a bodybuilding show. And he looked me up and down and he went, um, it's going to be hard work, you know. And I went, don't give a fuck. Eight months later, I got on stage. Wow. Um, I'd lost, I think I'd lost seven stone. Jesus Christ. And I got an award off Tier Pro and the the, the um, UK BFF. What the fuck? A are special you doing, award. John? They said to me, No, we've never seen a transformation like ever. And they gave me an award you've never given anyone before. They said, We just had to give you recognition. What you've done was a brilliant advert for the sport. That's was, incredible, isn't it? What was it doing? Yeah. Uh, I started in the January. The show was in the August. I am. Um, Got up every morning, walked 45 minutes faster than I had my breakfast, which was four eggs and uh, I think it was 50 grams of porridge. Um, and then I would have chicken and rice. Then I'd have chicken and rice. Then I'd have a protein shake and omelette or... No, I'd have a protein shake and a banana or an omelette. Then I'd have chicken and rice again. And I'd done that for eight months. I, I had like one chicken and rice by the end of it. I didn't care. I was just focused. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't even cook chicken back then. Probably yeah. was dry to fuck. <laughs> but um, yeah, I had one mil of testosterone, which is steroids, but it's the minimum amount. And that's not me justifying it, but I wasn't big. Yeah, and yeah. the reason why I had test was just to sustain my muscle, really. Um, I had a tablet called Clembuterol, which is a fat burner. Um, I had four litres of water every day. And I only train three to four times a week for 45 minutes. Mm. So it's consistency over time. But I didn't go out and get off my barney. I didn't go to Mackey's. I didn't do all these things we feel we need to do to enjoy life. But I was in a really great place. I was focused. I was healthy. Was and it did- one of the best places you've been, John, mentally? Physically? No, but I wish I was in that shape now. Because this version of John's well better equipped than that version of John. Yeah. yeah. He's, had to, he's gone through loads of lessons in, do you know what I mean? To get where I am now. Walk the country, mate. You learn a lot. Trust me. <laughs> Let, let's touch on that. You've done an incredible walk for charity. You sold your business, sweeps, and decided to walk the length of the country. Land's end to John O'Groats. Now, if that's not a fucking midlife crisis, John, I don't know what it is. No, <laughs> no I've said midlife note, crisis, but... but... On a serious note... What was the catalyst for change and what was the calling for you to do it? Well, that's what I said earlier on in the podcast. It's, I'd achieved what I set out to achieve with the barbers. Like there was a moment. It, yeah. You know, we talk about these little moments where they clicks. This was a moment as well in the barbers. 2000, 2017 this was, because that's when I left to go and do the bodybuilding show. I took time off. Didn't want to be there anymore. 
I walked in the barbers. I had a coffee shop as well attached to it. And um, we, every chair was chocker. Every chair had a barber on it. There was fucking about 30 people waiting. My coffee shop was rammed to death. And everyone had the little suits on in my gorgeous little shop. And I went, don't I? I've achieved what that 20-year-old set out to achieve. I've done it. What do we get out of bed for the next day? Mm. The money. It was never about money. It was just chasing that goal. And that moment had achieved it. So thing, I lost interest. So things started to dwindle. But if I'd have sold it then, fucking hell. I wouldn't be skint now, put it that way. <laughs> but um, I didn't. And uh, I kept it going for a few years. And it was just making me sad. I had no heart in it anymore. It's like being with a girlfriend you didn't want to be with. It sucks the life out of you. Mm. So I decided to get rid. Didn't get a great deal for it. And then... I got rid of everything and I was, I was living in my caravan in Wales. So I'm going to go and live in Wales for the summer. So I got rid of everything, went to live in my caravan for a bit. And um, I sat there one day and I went, I remember when I was a kid, my mum, I think it was Ian Bolton, walked land to John O'Groats. I remember mentioning or something my ma said. And the message you got was, people like us don't do things like that. Ish. Something like that. So, yeah. So, I, I don't know. How does that make you feel? It was just, that's just a message we get as a child, though, isn't it? Because mm. that was my mum's vision of the world. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then you pass it on to your kids, don't you? So, you know, I'm, I broke that mould. I broke that. You know, and my kids will go, my kids will never think like that. My kids think, well, my dad's done that. Or my dad's done this. My dad. And that's the best, the best gift I've given my kids is example. Do you know what I mean? Leading by example. No, well, it's like, well, they they hopefully won't question themselves because they got me to look up to, to think, well, my dad, my dad's done this, my dad's done that, so I can do it. But um, I had this moment where I had some money in the bank, I had no commitments, I had my kids, but I had to deal with that one. But then did it and I went, I'm going to walk from London to John O'Groats. Because if I can walk the country, I can do anything. How did you feel at the time before you'd walked the country, John? Do you know when you'd had solo barbershop and you were in the caravan? Was you happy? Did you feel free? Did you well, feel I relief? Felt, did you feel I, lost? I felt a weight off my shoulders. I felt it was a fresh slate. But I wanted, I felt there was stuff I needed to do before I embarked on my new life. Did you have direction? It wasn't, it was It was just about being on my own and... um. Was you solely on your own when you were in the caravan? Oh, no, not, not like that. That's, 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 no, not like that. I don't get lonely. Do you know no, I, mean? I don't mean that. I mean physically. Was you physically on your own? Or... Oh, yeah, I was on my own, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was just you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's time to reflect and it's time to think. Yeah, yeah. It was st I'm a complicated soul. It's the stuff I The whole point of the walk was to, to help me... Um, it was a reset. You call it a midlife crisis, but midlife crisis gets a bad rap. I think men get to an age where they reevaluate everything. And that's what I said before. The certain men that come up to me and go, oh, we had the boss do what you've done. But I just pressed the reset button when I had everything safe. You know what I mean? It's a brave thing to do. Yeah, it fucking is. I jumped in the deep end and I had to learn to swim. Anyway, so, yeah. So I decided to walk land into John O'Groats. And then... When I got 300 miles in, I got joined by the lovely Tim Edwards. You were joined by Tim Edwards, the father of Ellie Edwards, um, who also done an incredible thing alongside you and raised money for his chosen charity too. And you done yours in aid of gun and knife crime. Yeah. Um, you're an inspirational human being. Your mindset intrigues me. It's about 11, 1,200 miles, isn't it? From one end of the country to the well, other. Well, there's a route which is 850-odd miles, and then we decided to go the long way, do you know what I mean? <sighs> Either way, it's far, John. How long did it take for you to complete it? The first time I'd done it was... It took about three and a half months. But we had days off, do you know what I mean? We had, like, when we come to Liverpool, we have five days off. Some days, we I don't know, we'd walk into Durham, and we'd go, should you have a day off? And we'd go, yeah, go ahead. You know, and it was casual like that. Yeah, so it took three and a half months. What was Tim like to walk with as well? Well, 
originally, Tim, obviously, I was doing it for good and life crime, and I was leaving in January, and Tim's daughter was unfortunately killed, and he reached out to me straight away, and I didn't know who he was, I didn't, didn't know him. And he went, amazing, what you're doing? I was like, fucking hell. But this is real, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we sort, sort of got chatting, and he asked me if he could join me. And I said no, because I was doing this for me. I was, do you know what I mean? It's like, and I told him we know this, but I always said he was never, he's not my responsibility. And I know that sounds bad, but <laughs> I had, no, but I had to yeah. look after myself. Yeah. And he, but he, he said, you know what? I, I respect that. I said, I've, I've got to do this for me, mate. I'm so sorry. And he went, nah, it sounds, I get it. It's fucking fair play. And then when I got 300 miles in, we'd stayed in touch and he went, do you mind if I come and join you for a couple of days? He went, yeah, come up. You know, and I was in Worcester at this point. And he went, yeah. And he'd come up and we just fucking hit it off. And we just like... Would you say he's a friend for life now, John? Yeah, he, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, we're close as fucking anything. Like, we've been with him all day today. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? It's amazing. Um, but he was a grieving man as well. And th that was... Was that challenging? No, because I always I always said that to him and he didn't... I don't know whether he liked it, but I always said, he's not my responsibility. I didn't see him as... He, he was Elliot Edward's dad, and that's how everyone's seen him. And I thought, I'm going to just treat him as him. Mm. And I think that was a breath of fresh air for him. Refreshing. How mentally challenging was the walk itself? <sighs> it was the challenges along the way. Like, I had no money at one point. And then I had to conquer that. Um... There was many challenges along the way. There was probably five occasions where I think <laughs> was saying fucking but it's like I think the average person would have thought, well, that's a good enough excuse to justify not doing it. Do you know, just like there was points where it was like I could easily pull out now and no one will judge me. Like, but I'll never ever give up. I didn't give up no matter what. Mm. And if I didn't have a penny or I didn't have I'd, no matter what. I would have reached John O'Groat, no matter what. There is no way I'd have given up. What were you sleeping arrangements like and stuff like that, John? Well, initially, I always wanted to camp, but a lot of pe people convinced me not to, and I shouldn't have listened to them. I shouldn't have listened to them, because I, that was me. I'll tell you about this now. But um, initially, we got a caravan. Uh, someone lent us one, which I'm grateful for, and then that's where I met Brian. And Brian stayed till about Gloucester, and then Brian went home. So I was like, fuck, so I'm going to camp. So I only camped like two nights and then Tim turned up. I was like, right, we're camping, you know. He was like, yeah, sounds got me tent and all. I was like, sound. And I think we camped one night and he went, oh, fuck that camping shit. Yeah, and I thought, well, he, he's going next week. He's only staying for a couple of days. And then he stays all away. He ended up with you. So we stayed in B&Bs and, but we got a camper van in Scotland as well and we stayed in a camper van. Am I but right? a lot went on, more went on that walk than people know. Was like to enlighten us about any of it? No. <laughs> did you finish on your <laughs> sorry I love that <laughs> God. Did, you finish... <laughs> did you finish on your birthday no you aimed to didn't you we finished on the I think it was the 8th of May Um, you get mixed up we done the initial walk we finished on the 8th of May right yeah because I thought you I, I'd seen a video saying that we aim to finish on our birthdays yes Anyway, so we come back. But leading up to John O'Groats, we got, it was sad. We, from like Newcastle, I had a really bad time in Newcastle because I knew the walk was ending. I, I was I was, re I was the lowest I've ever been in my entire life in Newcastle. It wow. was really bad. Because you remember we walked from Cornwall to, to Liverpool and then straight to the East Coast. So we walked across, the, we done coast to coast as well. So I done 1,035 miles. But when I got to Newcastle, I asked myself the question, has this been in vain? Have I achieved what I've set out to achieve? Am I going to get out of this walk what I wanted? And I knew it was coming to the end. Didn't you want it to come to an end? No, neither of us did. So like, even like the last day from Wick to John O'Groat, I think it was like 17 miles. And we had all the press coming and our families were there. And we had like, we, we had to be there at one or two o'clock. So we thought, right, so we left about six or five in the morning. I thought, right, better get a wiggle on. And then 
toward like with like four miles to go, we started dragging our feet. And like we knew the press was there and stuff, and we just went, fuck them. Fuck them all. We don't want this to end. Let's just chill. And we just strolled in and like we stopped and we had we had this proper heart to heart about half a mile from the John O'Groat sign. We just didn't want it to end. Because I was going back to uncertainty. I had no money left. I'd spent my life savings on the walk. Everything I got from the shop I spent on the walk. Um, so I went back to nothing. And that wasn't the plan. And then Tim was going back to the trial of his daughter's murder. So, yeah, so it was quite chill. We didn't want it to end. What we had was to the feeling like when you finished, John? When you got to the finish line? It, it was like a really, it was like, uh, it was me, Tim and Brian at the sign. It was like... Try and put it into words. It was emotional. It was, um, didn't want to go home. None, none of us did. We, we'd run out of country. Wow. Because it's a great life. We're not in the system. You do your bit for the community, don't you? The likes will come together Christmas. Oh, yeah. 2020. <laughs> um, you done Kenny's Christmas Carol with the late J.K. Brown. What an actor, by the way. Yeah. Fuck, I can you that. Now then, Derek, lad, what are you up to? Lad, why are you dressed like that? Shocko, lad. Who stops me feet, lad? Because we'll see you, lad. He's been made, Jake. What an actor. Yeah. Um, and the likes of Pete Price, Paul Smith, Jazz Dickens, who we've had on recently. And it's unbelievable, because you're bringing local celebrities together and you're doing something amazing in the community, at the same time, helping to raise money through producing, in my opinion, Top class entertainment. Kenny's Christmas Carol was great, wasn't it? Magic. Absolutely magic. And this is where I'd like to touch on your writing and production because I think it's unbelievable and everybody sees the characters you play and say, he's hilarious. And you're hard, but the production quality, it, it, it fucking blows me mind, John. Um, for example, the most recent one you've done, the Home Alone Corona Mums. From the cast, the setup, the production, and the people who you get involved, really clever, like the likes of Jerome Griff Griffin with his Nabsies Peters instead of little Nero's and all that. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it, watching it just truly consume me. You know, when you're watching something and you're not in the room, you're not anywhere, you're just fucking, you ju you're just totally involved in it. That's when you know something's really good and you've got the ability to do that. Do you ever sit there and you're watching something, you're out the room and then bang, you're back in the room when it's over and it's like, See, yeah. See, yeah, like look at the Civil War we done. Like, you're from Liverpool, you're not meant to like people from the Whittle. You know, that's like the culture. And by the end of it, like when Craig, when I brought Craig in, everyone didn't like him, thought he was he, he was a noncy character. He was a bit, bit weird. He was unlikable and stuff like that, but... When you start to show his vulnerabilities, because we've done Undateables as well, and we yeah. show a bit of depth of these characters and stuff. So we've done Civil War where he was getting bullied. He got bullied by Turkey Teeth. And he's had enough. He's had a life of these people. And he, he thought, I, I, I've had enough. I've had enough. So he's standing up to the bully. And he was good. I was getting emotional about it. And he's, uh, he wants to have him a fight. And he goes out and trains and stuff and take, he's like blase about it. He's acting all cool, but deep down he was a bit shit. Yeah, he knows. And then they had a fight and uh, we had a screening. It was in the beer keller and Craig won. And that place, there was hundreds of people there and that place fucking erupted because everyone rooted for Craig. Did anyone know at that time who was going to win, John? I think we had to let Craig win. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, it's that. a good story. He does fucking mess it yeah. all up. Oh, yeah. no, he can't have that. But um, <laughs> he had to, he had, you know, he had to, he had, he had to have his, uh, what's it called? Redemption, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, he had to win. But um, everyone was cheering for Craig. And it's like, hang about, you're all cheering for some, some, like, what? <laughs> yeah, when he wouldn't. No. And when everyone's like, would have supported Turkey Teeth. So, People that are invested in that character. Yeah. And I think people do like the underdog deep down as well, John. You know yeah. what I mean? Whether they like to say it or not. Back to the home alone as well. Like when, when you had um, 
circus the fucking security was playing Harry like he was in his role and he's at the bottom of the stairs and he looks up and all that yeah. it was the moments like the way he looked at it and all that it's like you, the depth you'd went to fucking blew me mind because Home Alone as well is one of my favourite films of all time by the way period fucking fuck Christmas and that Home Alone I think we did a good job on that it was so an Home Alone amazing job yeah. an amazing fucking job and I was like whoa I was proper I was it, it blew me head off, John, and I thought, you are very f- funny and, you, you know, you're gifted and you're talented, but there's a lot of work and time goes into that. When did you start writing? Well, th- I mean, I'm the one who gets all the credit, but, I, you know, th- I'm th- I'm only one half of a team. It's like Owen Ward as well. He's like, he's just so talented. He's the one who do all the editing. He'll do the story structure. I'll come up with the jokes and the ideas, but Owen is the one that sort of... He reins me in. He structures everything for me. Well, for us, you know what I mean. He gives it the body. Yeah, and he edits it, and he done all the he done all the filming. I mean, it's exhausting enough for me doing all the playing all the characters. You know, it's hard. And um, but you know, I'm I'm only one half of a team. What's your favorite thing about your job? I've become a producer now. I've. I've risked everything to start my own production company. Is that what you could only do? Yeah, now? I've started a production company, me and own. Progress Pictures, we're called. Now, I've jumped into this arena that I don't know. I've jumped in. I'm a year in, and we're making a production now, and we're so proud of it, and we're showing it to people in the game, and they're like, wow, he's doing really well, and people are, are watching us, and people are they're like... Keep an eye on these. These are doing good. The production you're working on at the moment, can you tell us anything? I'm about not, I can't it? tell you what it is, yeah. Can you guess what it is yet? No, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you in a bit. Okay. But um, no, because we're looking on selling it to TV or maybe taking it down the festival route and hopefully selling it. But yeah, but we've had a backer. Like we spent a lot of a lot of money's gone into this, and we just want to legitimise what we do because you know I've cut me. We have cut our teeth with the likes of Turkey Teeth and mm. doing the, like, it, we, I used to film these on my phone during lockdown. I filmed them on my phones and then it slowly progressed progressed to the point where, you know, the effects where you'll have five people in the one room, they're all played by me and everyone believes they're all different people and it works. So we've gone from that and then we upped the production and we just kept upping it and upping it and upping it to the point where, like, it doesn't work for social media anymore. Where are we going to go? So this is what we're doing now. It's I There's a lot of work, time and effort that goes into these things, isn't there, John? Likes don't put food on my table. They certainly don't, my friend. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, that's just a game. It's just a game. And I don't really want to play it anymore. I'm not an influencer. I'm not a social media person. I'm, a, I'm an actor, writer, comedian producer that's what i want to do i'm not one of these like novelty fucking fellas with a saying do you know what i mean and, I th- and that's part of who you are back to when i said to you at the core john who are you you've just answered that question for yeah, yourself I suppose, there. Yeah, yeah. you're an actor writer comedian and producer that's yeah. who you fucking are yeah, yeah i suppose that's what i do yeah what you are what you do yeah that's we true. are what we do see like because like, that's our way of expressing who we fucking are like the last two weeks like being a Look, I, again, I still haven't succeeded, but I'm doing an all right job. How can I make Home Alone a 45-minute thing or Panic in Paradise in Turkey? And I didn't spend a penny making any of these things. I just, my personality and people like to help because I like to think I'm a nice guy and people like people like to help. And if I can bring all these resources together and create something for free. It's fucking incredible. That's being a producer. And I didn't even know I was learning that. And now... Like I knew the true, I know the true essence of what that role is, because the last two weeks we've moved mountains. Like it's, it's, it, yeah. So it's like, wow! I'm I can't to... wait to find out more about. I'll that show you. I'll show you in line, a minute. Yeah. I'll show you in a minute. But um, yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. And with that, what the, the project we're doing now, and then I've got another project which is going to be hard hitting. Not one bit of comedy anywhere here, by the way. And then after that, that's when I'm going to showcase myself as an actor. And then Owen can showcase himself as a director. But we need to legitimise what we do right now. And I'm not going to walk in saying I know exactly what I'm doing because I fucking don't. 
but I don't think anyone does. And that's transparency and honesty and being vulnerable like that. I think people champion you. Do you go, do. Do you do. If I walk in blagging, I know what I'm talking about. I get seen through. It's like when I said to you at the start, John, listen, these are the moments that I've envisioned mm. having you on here and you're buzzing off it. Go on, her. That makes Look, me feel good. That it's, you the tr- it's the truth, though, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and pretend it's not. These, mm. these are the fucking moments I've worked towards, and obviously... These are just, a, it's a path along the way, but for me, this this is a milestone. That's right. And, and I'm fucking buzzing with it. Boss. Um, are there any actors or influencers or people in general that have p- particularly influenced your approach to acting? Maybe not inspired you, but, it, you know, influenced you? Ricky Gervais, Steve Coogan, and Peter Kay. I think they're the three that have inspired me. Is there anybody in the industry who's took you under the wing, John? Taught you, showed you, helped you? Um, like when I first started, Neil Fitzmaurice was really good to me from Phoenix Nights because the first job I got was with him and he could see I was I didn't know what I was doing. And he he, he, he was good to me at the start. Yeah, he'd give you guidance. Yeah, yeah, he was really good to me. Um, who else? I've got a friend, Dan Hubbard. You know, I can always go to him for advice. If you had a message... And uh, there's a producer, Colin McEwen, he's been really good to me as well. Uh, but yeah, there's a... Uh, I'm trying to think, I don't want to leave anyone else. Jake, Jake Abraham, he was good. Legend of an actor. Yeah, Jake, yeah, Jake was good. So yeah. If you had a message or advice to any aspiring actors looking to break into the industry, what would it be? It's, it's just how you set your shop out. Again, I tell you now, I'm not a successful actor, and I'll stand by that till I am. But you're an experienced actor. Okay, I love that. But um, it's, it's how you set your shop out. If you want to, you know, it, it's an arena, and you need to get in the arena. So you need to establish yourself with it, get a decent show reel, do the shit. Do the student films, do the fucking free jobs, do all the low bail and stuff and create a show reel. Go and get your headshots done by a professional photographer, a professional headshot photographer, not your mate with a camera. And no matter how much you think, yeah, no, he knows what he's doing. He he's not, he doesn't specialise in headshots. Invest in yourself, just do that um, and get as many credits as you can and then try and get a decent agent and then keep going and working on it. And you might get that break, or you might be 15 down, years down the line and frustrated like me, where you've got to find a path. So I'm an actor. I'm an actor, but now I'm turning into a producer. But I'm an actor before I'm a comedian. Comedy is just an avenue for me to try and get there. So I suppose, I suppose I'm becoming a producer to showcase myself as an actor. So I suppose first and foremost, yeah, I'm an actor, yeah. So I'm just In the try- purest form? Yeah, probably, but yeah. you're I'm, trying to find a way to be an actor I'm without trying to having find all the yeah. of saying no you can't do this or that can't be done or yeah we don't really it, want to it, cast you here or... it's like the walk to John O'Groats it's like I would never have give up you just find solutions and it's the same with this it's forming a path like Sylvester Stallone isn't it? when he had fucking rock absolutely the idea and he said listen this, we either do it with me or we don't do it at all absolutely it's been so easy for him so we're, sold it. we're actually going through something a little bit similar right now but it's like well, it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you get, get hit. hit. <laughs> Keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. No, but it's, yeah. So, you know, we took a risk and he said no. No, not that. Someone said to me the other day, I said, like, what if I say no? And he went, well, no is very powerful, yeah. I said, well, yeah. But, um, yeah, just got to take the risk. Or you can just go and live your comfy life with your beard who you probably don't love, with your dog that you can't stand, <laughs> with your bifolding folding doors and your fucking skylight kitchen. Good luck. Yeah. Sound like I'm jealous there, man. No. Sure. No, but it's like... <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. You're out of your eye, John. That's what's got you where you are. Um, what's the end game, John? Or have you got one? Yeah, the end game is to be... A producer where if I get an idea, I've only got to make a few phone calls to execute it. Because then I'm doing what I enjoy doing with the people I enjoy being with, bottom line. What's your legacy? What would you like to be remembered for? What would you remember me for? (sighs) 
many things. It's pretty, not really a hard question, it's just a question I've got to think about. I'd remember, yeah, at first, when I first looked at you, John, I'd fucking just remember just, ah, yeah, he's funny, John May. The more I looked into you, the more in depth, and the more research I'd done about you, yeah, I seen there was so much more to you. Yeah, I'd remember, yeah, as a talented Liverpoolian, someone local who I could relate to, who's done great things with what they've had, with their yeah. life. That's how I'd remember you, John. I'd remember you as, as a talent, so, local talent. That's how I, I see you. Because you're not just fucking a one-stick pony. You can do many things and you can turn your hands to a lot of things. Like a lot of people who watch this podcast won't know John May was a bodybuilder, a fucking marathon runner, owned a business, walked from one end of the country to the other, has written stuff. Oh, yeah, never finished after. what we said. Do you know when, when we finished the walk, Tim had only completed 700 miles. So then Tim said to me on the day it was the trial, the day of the sentencing, will you walk from Worcester to Land's End with me so we can complete the journey? So we walked another 250 miles in the summer and Fuck. that's when we finished on my birthday. Our birthday. So that's where... Because you were in Tewkesbury. How do you know Tewkesbury? Well, I seen you down there, didn't I? I seen you on a video. You know? Oh, <laughs> love Tewkesbury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, <laughs> it's, it's only Tewkesbury and it was raining. You were fucking round. Two years. Was it raining? I don't know. Was it raining? But, but if you remember Tewksby, took about six weeks I feel, like, I feel like it was. Yeah. I feel like he's had that on, like fucking mm. Sonny Tewksby. I feel like he had a book of that on. I don't know. I yeah, don't know yeah, that was the second walk. But we done we done two walks. Tim's doing Marathon de Sables next month. And I'm gonna be doing Wales on my own. I'm walking from Cardiff to Landudno on my own. And I'm gonna camp. Because I need to scratch that itch because I never can't. Wow. Yeah. And is that the sole reason why you're going to do it, John? Or is there more to that? Is no, the, I just, once you start walking, mate, you, you, you want to, you leave the world behind. You leave it. So, you know, when we get to a motorway bridge or something, you see all these cars darting past, everyone rushing to get where they've got to be. We didn't have to be anywhere. Do you know what blows me mind with you, John? And this is just something that's just hit me in a fucking moment while I'm sitting here talking to you, looking at you. You're a person who's like, you're the man in the arena. With all them people around you, all them people looking to you being an actor. It's like the centre stage, the lights on you. And yeah, you love being in that spotlight because you're an actor. But at the same time, from what I get from you, you love being a million miles away from this place all Absolutely, the same yeah. fucking time. Yeah. And that's ironic as fuck. Yeah. But amazing at the same time. It's interesting. I like to just be out, out a bit. I like to choose when I can go in. Um, I was going to ask you if you had anything coming up that you're excited about, but we know you'd have, but you just can't talk about it. Let's do a little um, Fast 10, just a little bit of light hearted stuff. Fast you know, 10? So. Yeah, Fast oh, 10. Yeah. Might even have fucking Fast 11. Cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite spot in the city? Here, Ed. You could only keep one possession, what would it be? I've got a pillow, which is a wolf. And it's my... It, I, come to walk the country with me. It's, um, I have this pillow, and no matter what position I'm on, as long as I've got the wolf, I can get The wolf's all day. Yeah. It's, me, all it's, nice. me, it's only this pillow about that big, right? It's my prized possession. How long have you had it, John? About 10 years. You go through karaoke song? My way. And I fucking nail it. Is that your song or you yeah. eat it? No. What? That's life. He's, he, he oh, did, that's he, life as well for me. That's, that's life. That's yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Wall, chocolate? Chocolate. My man. Um, career highlights you can choose to. When, when I don't need, I don't know. I, I, I always forget about the live shows. I think I've got a bit of imposter syndrome with that. So thousands and thousands of tickets, but I always forget it. But I think when I finished the Olympia that night and everyone just stood up and I'd, I'd nailed it, it all come together. That was a big deal. Um, and, and I think one of the biggest buzzes as well it was was with the Liverpool players. I think as you know, it, I fucking nailed it. I na- You're serious, I, yeah. Yeah, I nailed it, oh, yeah. I think I've seen more. Um, best place in the world you've been? 
I've been in a lot of places. I don't know. You only pick one, John. And I've never do, 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 I've never do, heard do. I don't know. I've never been to don't know. <laughs> don't know is what I'm not sure. Some beautiful sights in Cornwall, like I mean don't get me wrong, I've been everywhere. I've been loads of places. Travel the world. You'd have to pick one, John. Somewhere in Cornwall. Cornwall's a nice part of the world. Um a good night in or a boss night out? Boss night in. <laughs> <laughs> um, Karen or Kirsty? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, hell, Karen. <laughs> Do you know what? It's like, uh, I was Karen. always going. I was always going to bring Kirsty back. You know, <laughs> like I just wanted to like do it like an episode, and then. I just wanted to see these feet rise with a Mac and it was outside the women's prison <laughs> and it was Kirsty with a bag. Oh, I'm back. You know, like, you know, oh, like these tenders. You've got it, you know. Uh, yeah, but no, I forgot about Kirsty, you know, haven't I? I have forgot about haven't. Kirsty. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what? Let's get this on TV, mate, and I'll fucking nail it. Lad, honest to God. It's got it. I want to see more of it, John. If you could do a live show, John, and you could play anywhere in the world, where would it be? Oh, I hope one day, I hope, I hope, I hope I can get the sitcom on TV, get enough hype and do the echo. The echo. The, the echo be it's serious. Called now. M&S, whatever. It's yeah. the echo, innit? We that know one. where you mean. That yeah. one. Yeah. If I could get the hype up to do that. Yeah. The echo. Um, one thing you haven't done on your bucket list. Hmm. Now, this is a bit serious, this one. And I probably am going to do it one day. Go on, If John. I don't die. Go on. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like the actor. It's like everything I've done. Um, I'm going to just say it. Just say it, John. I'd like to run the Atlantic. Say that again. Mm. I probably will do it. I fucking will. <laughs> Roll the Atlantic. Roll the Atlantic. Wow. I know. That was the last thing I thought you no, were going to say. No, it takes a while. Like, Wow. Mm -hmm. You could die, though. You could. Nah, but there's a race. You have this race. So if you do it on the race, you, you, you're pr pretty much protected. But if you do it solo, solo. Yeah. <laughs> no, let me, let me get rich first. Let me get rich. Let me get... Um, Enough of a profile where I can just pull sponsors in. Left, right, and centre. Yeah, and then I, I will probably roll the Atlantic at one day, yeah. That's amazing, yeah. I didn't think you were going to say that. You could have dinner. This is my last I one. was going to plan for it, but the expert talked me out of it. I wanted, when I got back from John O'Groats, I went, right, it's going to take like three years to source. But she was like, I don't want you to go. And the end, I went, oh, fucking leave it. I'm not with it now. Start I'm, again. Innit? Go again. I will do plan it. Plan again. I will do it. You set your mind to something, everything else. You seem to set your mind to who you've done, haven't you? You've got to ask yourself the question, why though? Why? Like, because I want to, I want to be in pitch fucking black in the middle of the night, unsafe as fuck. Because that's the only place where you live, and I want to be able to like see them stars and know. There's like, oh, I just, I just want them beautiful moments. There's another place out there, in the John, and as they say, on the other side of the fear is greatness, and that's where, it, that's where you really are alive. Yeah, yeah. Like that, and oh. you said you could die, yeah, but you definitely fucking live. Yeah, like, honest to God, like, yeah. You don't really grow out of your comfort zone, mate. You certainly are. This is my last one. If you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would it be? Paul McCartney. Okay. John Lennon. Gonna be a fucking musical event, like. And Ringo, would you put Ringo in as well? Why don't you like Ringo? I didn't say I didn't like Ringo. <laughs> I was just saying, yeah, Ringo. I like well. Ringo Starr. Loads of people don't like him because he said, "Look, if you've done that, right, you'd have to have a fourth person at that table. You've got to bring George as well, haven't you? You, you only said three. 
Yeah, I don't know, but I'm saying you can't fucking have them three and leave him out. No one I mean. It's a bit of fucking hell. Well, if it's just four, they'll probably put David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do any shout outs before we go? I want to talk about Ringo Starr. Gonna give Ringo a shout out? Yeah, it's him. like, it pisses me off. Oh, right. Go on, John. Okay, let me ask you a question. Where do you live? Liverpool. Where? Dovecot. Would you rather live in Dovecot or on a beach house in Malibu? I'd rather live in a beach house in Malibu. No one's going to judge you for that. I'd like to output the Judge Ringo. The Judge Ringo for saying it. I'd like to come home from time to time as well. If I was fucking loaded, John, I'd, I'd, say, I'd spend so many months of the year away and I'd spend a couple of months back at it, home. It, it, so Jonathan Ross asked him the question. Jonathan Wash. Jonathan Wass asked him a question, you know... Blah, 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 you know, about li- uh, living in Liverpool. He went, no, would you? But what he meant was, is that, you know, look where I fucking live now. You know, he succeeded. Do you feel like everyone hates on Ringo? I just I just think a lot of people hate on people who've done well. Let me tell you a quick story before you go, right? I'd like to tell you to tell me a quick okay. story. So I watched this documentary about this Sylvester Stallone impersonator, right? So he goes to the house and he goes around blagging to be Rocky, right? And he goes to the house where Rocky films Rocky, and there's this guy in Philadelphia going, fuck Stallone, fuck Stallone. I'm doing an American accent. He yeah. ain't done nothing for Philadelphia and all that. And it's dead awkward, and this fella's going, fuck him, he's done nothing for Philadelphia. Ripping the back out of Sylvester Stallone, right? So Philadelphia's got an economy, hasn't it? I went to Philadelphia, and I spent, I only spent the day there, but I reckon I spent about $350. The only reason I went to Philadelphia is because I wanted to run up the Rocky Steps and see the Rocky statue. Bottom line. So Sylvester Stallone made me spend $350 in Philadelphia. So to answer that fella's question, he can fuck off because Sylvester Stallone has done everything for Philadelphia, right? And I think people have similar things when it comes to like Ringo Starr and it annoys me. Well, you've enlightened me, and I'm, I'm glad you've shared that with Does us. Does that make so, sense, yeah, though? No, it fucking Because the only yeah. thing Liverpool, Liverpool's got going for it, really, like, is, is, is tourism. That's the only thing we've really got going for us, is tourism. And the main draw in tourism is the Beatles. Well, here, here, I just want to go against the grain here and fuck with you a little bit. Cause fuck with me, let's go. Right, like, do you think they come for fucking Ringo Starr, or did he come for John Lennon? Did he come for Paul McCartney? Yeah, let's go to Liverpool, man. Let's go to Matthew Street. Let's 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 go and see Ringo Starr. No. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. Let's go and see John Lennon. No, I think I know. He's, he's collectively they are the Beatles. He's part of that. Yeah, well he is, and that's why I said you couldn't leave George out, John. You know what I mean? Well, I, I he's just, just fucking sitting there. No, on but his you know what? In the corner, I'll just fucking shut a noodle. I, I can just you, shut Ringo up and John all and that. just read the <laughs> scout script and act how everyone expects us to act. <laughs> Or I can no, just be true to myself. I love the way you break the mould and I love yeah, that about you. Yeah, it's fucking, get off his back. Have you got anything else you want to say? No, I fucking haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I think we've covered all bases. We what? have. I've really enjoyed it, John. And I'd like to say thank you. It's been a fucking absolute pleasure. Would you like to do any shout outs before we go to anyone or anything? No. Well, John, this podcast has been rated S for Scouse. <laughs> As well? Has been rated S for Scouse. It's right, lad. I'm going to be on with that. It's right, lad. And a bit, lad. Nice one, John. Thank, Thank you. you.